something in the uh, in the Slack, and I get all the Slack and it was interesting that it actually says the name. I think I didn't think it was like that before. <laughs> Ready to go? What do we got here? We got, got people. Matt, Sarah, Vernon, Paul, Jeff. What's up? What's it? <laughs> All right. Looks like we're ready to do a show. We've got a lot to talk about today, so let's uh, get the thing going and we'll get rolling. Um, everybody hit record. Okay, uh, I'm rolling. Do anything. You're rolling. All right, Dave. This is three of Recording. Six. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm rolling. We're going to do a sync clap, and it will be one, two, three, clap, okay? Okay. One, two, three. Cool. Cool. All right. I think we're good to go. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. We'll try and roll through it as quick as we can. Um, at one point, there will be a talking pig. Just uh, just roll with it. <laughs> um, and let's see. All right. <clears throat> Have a little sip of Monster to get me going here. All right. Here we go. You good with pronunciation, Matt? <laughs> Do you want we'll to see. Us a bit? We'll oh. see. Yeah. Are you? All right. I told you, it's just not Menninger. That's it. I know. I won't. I won't. I, won't. I promise. <laughs> you shouldn't right. have said it because now it's in my head. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Here we go. What's up and welcome to another MoGraph MoCast. I'm Dave. And I'm Matt. And joining us today is the super talented Arno Malonge. Oh, nice. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> and MoGraph is a supplement to our site, MoGraph.com, which is a motion graphics tutorial site with tutorials, plugins, podcasts, and other MoGraph stuff. And on the show, we talk about everything ranging from motion graphics to Cinema 4D, After Effects, plugins, render engines, doing business, doing taxes, being a contractor... Or working for the man. You can email us, info at MoGraph.com. Let us know what you think about the show. Questions, comments, concerns, queries, grievances, artist suggestions, show topic suggestions. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, MoGraph.com. Check us out on all the things. Send us your questions. It can be new. It can be advanced. Uh, if it's new, we'll try and answer it. If it's hard, expert level will not answer it well, but maybe we can find you somebody who knows how to answer it. And we got a lot to talk about this week, a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. And right. please excuse me, I am yes. fighting a bout of uh, either food poisoning or something. Or so something. I was up all night puking. That's right. So I'm a little tired, <laughs> and my voice, as you can tell, <clears throat> has been eaten away by stomach acid. But you Fun. can do uh, voiceovers for movie trailers now. Yes. In a, In a world. world. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a lot, including we, we're going we're gonna to talk about the, the hacking of Octane Jesus today. We're going to yes. dig into that a little bit in the drop segment when we talk about NFTs and such. Um, we are going to play some of the clips and things today about that just to kind of give you an overview of what's going on and give you some tips to keep yourself safe. So stay tuned for that. I figure we we talk about that now because that was pretty big. And even if you're not into NFTs, you might want to find out a little bit about that, you know. Uh, so I will say that uh, when we have our holiday episode, it will be on December 20th. Uh, Aryev said he's already going to come on and he's going to tell us the entire story. We'll have story mm -hmm. time for Christmas drop. <laughs> uh, and then... Um, in two weeks, we're going to have Billy on the show, and I'm sure we're going to be talking like a ton about crypto and crypto mm -hmm. security and all of that. I really think it's it's most likely going to be a very, very heavy NFT episode um, so be and prepared. crypto and security episode. Just, yeah, be, be prepared for that because we've talked to Billy before. We probably won't have that much to catch up on. I mean, we, we do mm -hmm. want to talk about some of his new art and things, but crypto heavy episode, just so you know. And then... Get your questions ready because next week after Thanksgiving, Jules is mm -hmm. going to be on the show with us. And we're going to be talking about Render, of course, RNDR. We're going to be talking about crypto and blockchain and new Octane stuff, hopefully Brigade and the Holodeck and all the things. Mm -hmm. and all the it's going to be fun. About. Yeah. 
it's going to be fun. It's going to be a great episode next week. So just giving everybody a heads up on that. Uh, Brush Up is out. Don't forget, if you want to learn Procreate for iPad, check that out. Caitlin's course, mograph.com slash classes. Uh, there are no Black Friday sales. People ask that mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, if you want to look at our FAQ, we explain the whole thing, but we try and price everything the same at all times. Um, mm -hmm. So you don't have to be like, oh, I'm going to wait and get it later. Mm -hmm. It's like it's always the best price we can possibly give. So yep. um, also wanted to give an update on the scholarship judging because uh, we, I, I had forgotten to give an update on what's going on until last week. I did say um, that the judging was, was going on. Uh, we're waiting on a few more judges to get back with us with their final answers and such and next week on the show we will announce those answers so uh, those answers the, the mm -hmm. their decisions the results. Woo. okay so there's that and then uh meetup updates let's do some meetup updates real quick the meetup yeah meetup in burbank uh still going on december 4th um uh in burbank i believe it's brace canyon park um is the name of it um uh, go online uh, to our Eventbrite um, and or social, social media channels. Up, or social links. media channels. Yeah. yeah, we've got the links there. Um, pick yourself up a ticket. It's like five bucks, and that covers your food, you know, and drink and stuff like that, you know. So uh, we're gonna have a taco truck, you know. If you Sweet. don't want food, just show up anyway. Who cares, you know? <clears throat> Is there gonna so, be cornhole? There will be cornhole. There will be nice. hacky sack. There's gonna be frisbees. There's gonna be What's that game where you throw the frisbee and you try and get in the bucket, the other person's bucket? Frisbee uh, golf? Uh, no, it's like Cam Jam or something like that. We're going to do that as well. Oh, so yeah, it uh, should be a lot of fun. You know, just a chance for everyone to hang out outside, uh, 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 socialize and stuff, because there hasn't been that many meetups. We figured why not do one at a park somewhere. So uh, super yeah. excited about that. There will be a secret little uh, after party, so make sure to hit one of us up mm, afterwards. And we'll let you know party, where it's at. Huh? Underground party, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, so big shout out to our two sponsors who are helping sponsor the event. Without them, uh, we couldn't have done it. Uh, uh, Maxon and Otoy, big shout out to them for helping us out with this, uh, with this helping put on this event. So super excited. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I can't yeah. wait. Cannot wait. You guys, you guys will get to meet my kids because I'm bringing them. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be cool. Yeah, I always wanted to take my daughter to one of our MoGraph meetups. Maybe someday. Yeah. Someday. Yeah. Uh, gotta, <clears throat> gotta, you know, not be during school, but we'll figure right. it out. Um, right. So, um, other things, other topics we need to cover. Sometimes people who haven't seen the show before, they come on. And they're watching because they want to <laughs> see an interview with someone. They're like, why aren't you interviewing the person yet? Well, we do a lot of other things, so we kind of give people yeah. a week wrap-up here. I'd hate to put it at the end of the show because people are going to miss it at the end of the show. I know how that goes. I know you turn it off when I'm talking about T-shirts at the end. So we put, mm -hmm. this, <laughs> we put this at the beginning. The topic, the one thing I wanted to bring up before we get into the interview here is the Otoy announcement on the 3D Motion show. The other day, Jules came on and uh, announced yeah. that Redshift will be joining the Render Network, yeah. which is awesome. You're going to be able to send your renders <clears throat> from Redshift to Render. Yeah, yeah. that's really exciting. And also, uh, C4D native files, is that yeah. right, as C4D well? C4D native. Which is going to be, yeah. I think that'll be awesome. That's going to be really, really cool, you know, being able to do that on the Render Network. Yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, from all that Jules has talked about, you know, I had a feeling this was coming. Um, I didn't think it would be so soon, but right. I'm I'm really excited about that. I mean, think about it. They'll have Octane, Redshift, C4D, Standard, uh, 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 Arnold here eventually. And mm -hmm. uh, today, or the other day, uh, he tweeted that they were looking to add Cycles and Unreal to it as well, oh, which is, yeah. that's going to be killer. That's going to be so killer. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. know how some of the render farms are going to survive and stuff like that, but... Well, hopefully they can yeah. just put their nodes onto the render network. And, yeah, I know, yeah. I know. That's what I was thinking, too. Yeah. You know, that'll be interesting. And supposedly it'll be like, you know, well, first of all, the plugins and everything should work with it. It's not packaging yeah. it as an, an Orbix. It's going to somehow... Well, with the C4D files, no, yeah. 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 So the C4D I, wonder if files the, are... I wonder if the Redshift is going to be exported Orbix or whether it's going to be a Redshift proxy. Yeah, I don't That'll know. be interesting to find uh, out. I don't know. I guess uh, they're still working on it. Of course, we can talk about it next week when Jules is on quite a yeah. bit. And um, and I think a lot of people are asking, too, they want to hop on 
to the render network and render things. Yeah. And yeah. I think that there's a waiting list currently, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. As of right now, um, uh, uh, according to, to Jules, they have like 10,000 people on the render network at, uh, that are like node operators and stuff. And I, I don't know if that counts individual wallets uh, or whether it's like computers because I've actually got three nodes, you know, so I don't know if I count mm. for three people or one mm. person. Yeah, I don't know. But, would... yeah. So, I mean, they've got like 10,000 people, you know, so right now with just Octane jobs, that's about, you know, all they need. But once you start throwing in these other render engines and stuff like that, man, it's going to be they're going to be they're going to need a lot more, a lot more people, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll get all the... And at the, the price of render right now, who boy. <laughs> oh, man. You're making bank. <laughs> Watching that right now, too. Yeah. Yeah, so... All right. Well, let's get down to it. Let's get yeah. into the interview. Um, so we'll, we'll probably end up talking a lot about projection mapping and things today. Yeah. You yeah. have done some beautiful work. Um, but let's go back and start from the beginning. Let's talk about um, your your start in this industry and <laughs> how you got to where you are now. Uh, well, uh, it started a long time ago just because of the fact that when I was younger, I had the chance to, as a lot of people that are young and that are starting, I just cracked Photoshop at one point. Like, if yeah. everybody started doing yep. that, I was yeah. hearing that. seems like a common intro to every <laughs> yeah. story, you know, is it? Every, yeah. That was last week as well. Sorry, keep yeah. going. Yeah. No, no, that's exactly why I'm feeling confident about doing it. It's just because last week someone said exactly yeah. the same thing. Yeah. I didn't know if I mean, we had the... We all did. You know, but at, at one point, it's yeah. how you start when you don't exactly know uh, what happens. And that's also where I started making some simple Photoshop montage of friends and things really, really simple like that. But mm -hmm. then you realize that actually people are living with that kind of skills. And you realize that there are schools that are teaching um, some way to perform and to be better at that. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, I'm, I studied in a, in a city called Strasbourg in, uh, in France, in the east of France, near Germany. And I just started by learning um, theater, cinema, and dance in the, the university over there, which honestly leads up to absolutely no job at all, but <laughs> it made me meet a lot of really nice people. And then I went to Paris to do a school called uh, Isart Digital in uh, 3D and visual effects. And that's where it all started really to, uh, to come together, like all those small skills that I had aggregated during the time knowing a bit of Photoshop, being able to make some small video effects for short films during the university and things like that. That's when it all piled up to uh, being able to have a job way, way faster than I thought. And I started as a motion designer in a company called Ventprivé.com, which is uh, some kind of a huge uh, sales operation system in Europe. And they do a lot of short film to promote the, the sales that they're going to do for clothes, for stuff like that. And it was really, really super chill to to learn Cinema 4D with uh, with talented artists and without having too much pressure from the client because all the videos that we did were actually gift to the client. Mm, so you oh, start cool. by having access to uh, Canon 7D, Canon 5D, Cinema 4D, and uh, a render farm, and you just have like a complete blank slate to make something. It's not a huge pressure. It's a, it's super fast pace. So it teach you how to how to make things like that. And then after that, I became an art director for a web company in Paris called the Sweet Punk, which is an amazing company. Honestly, if you have the, the occasion to work with them, it's, uh, it's super nice. And then I moved to Canada to uh, work with a Moment Factory in projection mapping specifically. So that's cool. how I ended up doing motion graphics. Basically, as everybody, I watched Video Copilot a lot when I had free time before. I what, all uh, my what part of Canada are you in? I'm in Montreal right now. Montreal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I take Are, the easy do you know, way to learn uh, French, you know, so I'm going uh, to Canada. Yeah, do you know do you know Patrick, Patrick uh, uh, Patrick Goski? I think he's in oh, Montreal yeah, of course. as well. I had a, yeah. we had a, we had a restaurant with him when uh, Matthias and all the team uh, went there for mm -hmm. the first 3D motion show in uh, in real the only one that they do the mm. tour that they yeah. made worldwide. Uh, right, yeah. There was Chad Ashley, Robin. Um, there were many people mm -hmm. in Montreal mm -hmm. uh, in the, I think it was September two years ago. And yeah, uh, yeah, I yeah. had a, I had a quick uh, a quick meal with uh, Patrick Goski. Victor yeah. was there, I think. Weight of thought. Yeah, and, uh, Victor was there, and also Charlie Leroy from uh, Montreal. But, uh, it was an amazing day, honestly. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, did you said theater? Did you say dance as well? Mm. It's just like living arts, so it um, it joins together cinema, dance, and theater. 
Interesting. Did you mm-hmm. do you find that any of that applies to to anything you do in work? Like, do you ever do like character animation or something? Does that help? Uh, I don't. I do that, but really not enough, and I'm really not a specialist in that. But I'm doing mostly when we have some small stuff like 2D puppets animation to just correct something. Um, I can I end up making them. But in fact, the the best thing that I learned with all of the theater crew is just to be able to express something, find a way to have a conversation because I feel like we are in a we are in a business in which a lot of people are living uh, uh, spending a lot of time in front of their computer and mm-hmm. we tend sometimes to have difficulties to express stuff and I end up right now uh, at my factory to to do a lot of uh, of teaching of uh, knowledge sharing across the different the different department of the company just mm-hmm. because of the fact that we have so many things that are been done uh, at that place that you don't obligatory understand what is content creation when you just have to uh, be like uh, dealing with clients all the time in one of the departments. So it's a lot about making sure that everybody understands what you do, how you do it and what you need to do it properly. And it's it's a company. So it's uh, it's always complicated to to make those things and to be sure that everybody knows the right thing. But that's honestly the, the best perk that I had during my uh, my scholarship is just having to talk a lot and having to present stuff in a job in which I'm not Obligatory. I don't have to do it a lot, but right now with my position, I'm doing it way more often. It's really the best thing I, I learned during uh, during university. Mm-hmm. So tell us a little bit about the uh, the company. I guess mm-hmm. because you do tons of projection mapping and stuff, and um, I'm curious, like, what are the main clients that you're doing this for? Are they agencies? Is it direct to is it artists? Um, is it conventions? It, it depends a lot, honestly. There are stuff that I don't have the right to tell, and there are amazing, huge clients that we have, and we work really often with them, but I don't have the, the, the technical right to tell you exactly what we do. But we have um, a theme park department in which uh, lately we've done a lot of promotion on what we've done. Mm-hmm. Uh, we won um, an award for one of the shows that we made in Hong Kong. So it's it was a project mapping on an aquarium in the Hong Kong uh, it was the uh, Ocean Park in Hong Kong, so it's really near the ocean, a huge, huge, amazing uh, attraction park. Uh, we have a lot of, so, a lot of theme park, uh, but there are lots of projects that I don't have the right to tell. We have also our own brand that we're trying to develop that is called the Lumina, and it's night walks uh, in the forest. So basically, we do everything that we, we know how to do the best. So lighting show, uh, projection mapping, having remapping a lot of uh, LEDs around the forest, and it's just for creating a, a really nice experience, yeah. And Is this that's the one since, here? Yeah, that's one yeah. of the tests that we made this year just because of the pandemic and it wasn't easy for us to, to move around the, the, the countries because we do that all around the world. Uh, uh, one of the partners of the company, Dominico De, has uh, a chalet, so uh, a wooden house near a lake. So it's oh, just around that wooden so house cool. we made uh, some kind of exploration, some tests just to install everything. Usually we do that every year as some kind of a small festival for the company. We have mm-hmm. our own festival in-house in which we invite some uh, some um, artists to come to play music and we do a lot of visual for them. We do some experimentation. That's a really nice way to test things outside of the box and outside of uh, being constrained to client requested and everything. Yeah. So, for example, you should come lots... do that for Camp MoGraph. <laughs> oh, well, killer. sorry, man. I'm, yeah. I'm totally down for that. We do like <laughs> laser projection. We do uh, everything like that, tracking. I remember mm-hmm. the first year I was in my own factory, they put some uh, floating like balloons on the lake and they were able to track it all over the lake oh, and wow. project it even if they were moving alongside. So mm-hmm. it was so, so cool. And honestly, it's, wow. it's a lot of small experimentation. And since we also have an interactive department, we can also play uh, a lot with Touch Designer, which is an amazing software. Mm-hmm. And it's looking yeah. like a lot like Houdini, but it's mostly made to right. ingest uh, some stuff coming from a real life. So uh, right. capacitor, cameras, infrared, everything like that. You could use that to create new content live. And it's mm-hmm. it's so cool to be able to work with that. I made a little thing for fun just to try out uh, Touch Designer. I never mm-hmm. really finished it or mounted it or anything, but I, I did a little thing with a, a depth projector that would like mm-hmm. see pool balls on the pool table oh, nice. and and put like a little tracker around them i was thinking it would be fun to like project onto the pool table and maybe you can even like set up shots 
on it, you know, try this shot, try this shot, you know, and it shows where the trajectory is going to be. Uh, it's great because it's like nodal based and it, it feels very familiar when you're in it. But I'm looking at some of the stuff that, that y'all do. And, and of course, I know some of the stuff's proprietary. So if it is, just tell me. Um, oh, everything that is on the know. stuff uh, on the website, you can show there is no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, as far as is, uh, is open like, uh, to discussion. It's for, it, okay. I mean, as far as technique and stuff, I don't know. Sometimes mm -hmm. there might be some little trade mm -hmm. secrets or something. But um, the the thing that you did on the aquarium, just absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Like, that's, if that's you're listening to that's the audio 20 version minutes of this. Of show right now. Oh, man. That, that Where is are the just, projectors? I, that was going to be my question. Well, they build because it's a part that already exists. So we had to deal with the fact that they already have architecture all around. Now we are focusing all the photo, all the videos on the aquarium, but it's a lake around which everybody can walk around and there are stand of food, there are restaurants, there are other attractions. So we basically already have an infrastructure there and all mm. they needed to do is being able to construct, really to build out of nowhere some towers in which we put projectors and servers. And I think for this one, we had four or five projectors that were uh, striking the, the facade at the same time. So you also need to make a, to find a way to blend them together to make right. the show work like that. Right. Fun story, I never, sh I, I went there. I went there for the integration. So mm -hmm. the last part of the production, we go on site and we check if stuff actually stick to what we wanted them right. to look like or, <laughs> or if it just doesn't work mm -hmm. and we need to adjust everything. I never show the, the version of, the sh of, of that specific show entirely just because of the fact that they were super late in the construction of one of the tower. Mm -hmm. So all the east, the west, the west facade, like all the, the part at the end with the wings, I've, I've never seen it properly just because <laughs> of the fact that the projector was not built at uh, the right time. So mm. friends of mine had to stay a month more in uh, South, uh, Southeast Asia just to stay there wow. and being sure that the, the rest of the show is working on that. Wow. But yeah, it's, uh, it's, um, we were in charge of the video that you saw and it's just one of the three shows that we did. There were dancer, uh, fire show with that thing, like so fire bursting, uh, fountain, animation. We had to do everything, of course, with people partnering with them, with, with us, but we were in charge of the, of the whole show itself. Wow. I'm assuming those are laser projectors that are on those. They're so vibrant. Sometimes, yes, it depends on the budget of the project, actually. We have different types of projectors as we have different types of budget, and sometimes you have to work on really intense uh, scale of work. For example, uh, in the 3D motion show of September, I'm showing an example with a, a show called Super Real in New York right now. Mm -hmm. And it's basically as if you were walking inside of a, let's say a cathedral type of uh, architecture. So super high ceiling, super high walls, mm -hmm. and you are surrounded by projection. The template itself is 22K on almost 2K uh, height. Oh my so it's, gosh. it's amazing to see that for real, but it's a pain in the ass to work with. And it's just sure, one yeah. of the projects that we have. So it's a, it's a lot of work to make that. And I think they hosted an NFT uh, gallery during the New York's event uh, the two yeah, or three NFT, weeks ago. Yeah, uh, NYC NFT or yeah. NFT NYC, yeah. I think they used uh, the super real as the fact of having so much project and so much space. They just put it, uh, they, they transformed it in, a, in an art gallery. Here's some of the clips from uh, uh, 3D Motion uh, From show. the show reel, yeah. Yeah, uh, this is show reel on the 3D Motion show. Uh, how do you go about like managing something that's 22 K? I mean, you're, you're, I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing you kind of divide this up, chop it up into different Yeah, uh, because there is sections. technically no way of, uh, there is no way of making oh, the so 22 K cool. uh, compression. Right. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm, I'm working on a project that is 27 K long, I think almost. Wow. Uh, you just have to split your render. So you do everything on the full scale of the show and then you pipe your after effect, um, your after effect pre comp into something else that is splitting it. That's what mm -hmm. we call a template. So you mm -hmm. have the template to work in how the screen are going to look like if they are wow. just put all of them all together. And then you have the template for rendering the system output that can look completely different. Mm -hmm. See, Matt and I that, do a lot of oh, concert visuals gorgeous. and things, and we've done a couple projection maps that were like nowhere on this. So that freaking bridge, I just can't even imagine how much. That's a time lot of and LEDs, uh, LEDs barred. Then 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. The thing is, right now, you see, it was a show that I uh, I worked just on the edit of the show. So every every artist has made already a capsule and was just editing it for the opening. Yeah, but the news during one. the opening okay. night, yeah, it's no, it's, Oud, it's so Oud, many. Oud so many worked things. on that, right? Oud Givarsh, is that who? It was? Uh, yeah, Oud Givarsh yeah. is uh, that also made some three D motion show like long time yeah, before. Yeah, for yeah. She did she, Sigraph. She, she, uh, yeah. she yeah, yeah, we hung out at Sigraph like twenty seventeen or something. She also yeah, did the Ed Sheeran, times. which you just show. Uh, <laughs> she, oh, she, she worked did? a lot. With, yeah, that's the red hot chili peppers with the lantern. No, oh. that's so cool. That is so cool. The and. <laughs> And that's the thing of the company. We do it in public. So when the, the, when the pandemic strikes, uh, it was kind of a challenge for us to keep doing yeah, stuff. Right. But we ended up working way more with uh, XR content. So, for example, we worked on Billie Eilish on some of the show that she did during the pandemic and also right now with cool. all the, the, the enhanced visual of the show that you can see on stuff like Jimmy Fallon's, things like that. Mm-hmm. We have to have the technology to be able to make that. And now we try to turn more and more to uh, live uh, rendering engine. So Unreal Engine, we try to use that as much as we can. There are still bridges to make between Cinema 4D and Unreal. Yeah, yeah. yeah right now I'm working sure. on a on a show for um, for an hotel that's gonna be uh, in Paris, well, near near Paris. I think like if we put together all the video uh, surface that we have, it's 52 HD screen all together. Like it's wow. it's spread up around a, a full hall of the hotel. And just the surface of what we have to do is almost 52 screens. Wow. Huh. So, so yeah, it's a, it's a lot of constraint to, to work with that. And it's also super complicated when we have uh, new people coming from other types of industry that are using, like, for example, coming from advertisement, coming from uh, the VFX industry, mm-hmm. when they, they work with such a level of like high quality, high standard on uh, the detail, on all the small details, on the texture and everything. And right. you arrive here and it's, 52k <laughs> you're like, yeah maybe you will need to step down and just be sure yeah. that everything is rendering just right. rendering <laughs> yeah that's another type of follow-up problematic <clears throat> so you actually render like the full image in c4d and then cut it up in after effects mm-hmm. depending on the project if there is a way to oh. simplify that we try to make it as uh, uh-huh. as as simple as possible and as uh, flexible as possible just because of the fact that i never see what i'm what i'm Finally, giving until I'm mm-hmm. at the end in front of the screen or in front of the of the facade of a, of anything to, yeah. to to show like the real colors, the real intensity, the real scale. So we try to work as much as we can uh, in comp in After Effects, but most of the time you don't have the choice. You have to render stuff from Cinema 4D or either from Maya also. Yeah, work, uh, sometimes with Maya. I was curious if like it might. I I, I don't know. Like versus rendering the entire thing as one frame maybe breaking it up into like takes or something and then doing the film offset to where you're actually physically breaking it up in cinema, you know, be hard to doing to, multiple. Yeah. But I don't know if that would. Well, sometimes would... we are, when we have to make patch at the end, like for example, you don't have the time to re-render everything yeah, just right. because one object is not rendered. Then we just do um, the render region yeah, just yeah. to be able to like scrap half of the yeah. half of the rendering. Right. But then again, you have to go after that in After Effects. We have our own yeah. render farm. And that's funny because yeah. we were talking about the render token and everything. I think mm-hmm. that most of the company that are dealing with render farm also have issues with uh, confidentiality, being sure that you have the right to send mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Even in house, we are really struggling with the versioning of the of the software, of the plugins, and just being sure that everybody is using the right version of X particle. Right. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. when you launch something or oh, After Effect, because sometimes it's super easy when uh, when you have the auto update to just update your software. Yeah. People were noticing mm-hmm. during the 3D motion show that we are still using after 2018 and Cinema 4D Air 20. So yeah, that's yeah. just because we we just we struggle so much to just update everything at the same space where we want. But that's an issue, honestly. But, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, Matt and I did some projection mapping. I did mm-hmm. one. Uh, it was We've actually done a few, yeah. Ten years ago, this month, I I finished oh, one for Christmas. Congrats. On a church, and it was it was uh, very rudimentary. This is like the mm-hmm. very early days of projection mapping. You know, there was not a lot to uh, that you could do as as far as like the facades of the building getting the um, getting the geo data. I mean, this mm-hmm. is like 2011, mm-hmm. so it was early days of this. And then we did another one that was a little more complicated on at Bush Gardens. We did one that was you know where we went there and we. We scanned it with drones and did mm-hmm. photo mapping mm-hmm. and stuff. So when you're prepping these, how do you go about just figuring out how you're going to do the facade 
of the building and everything. Are you provided with materials or do you have to go out and measure or? It really depends on the project and if they already, for example, a show that already uh, had someone being doing something, uh, a company that already had something <laughs> being done a few months ago, a few years ago, and they just need to update the content and the quality of the content, mm -hmm. they usually have stuff to provide us or even construction plans to provide us and we can build visualization out of that. Um, the other side is when something is already built and they never did anything before, mm -hmm. we have to send a team and it's also the concept itself that's going to drive how much time and how much, well, money we spend on making right, uh, as, it as precise as possible. But when you have, for example, on the, during the, the show wheel, you see something in a, in a basilic, it's in Montreal, it's the Basilic Notre Dame, they had to scan like a lot of things because it was uh, all the front-facing statue inside of the of the of the art of the basilic itself and the ceiling also so you have to have detail because you want to be able to mask the statue make believe that you have lights behind them so it's super complicated but then mm -hmm. you have way more like rudimentary stuff that are just on uh, planar things so for example the aquarium the scan mm -hmm. itself is not that complicated it was also it was way more complicated to actually make everything stick to the surface because they didn't have any uh, sure. repair, any any way to be sure that everything was at the right positioning. So it's it's always complicated to to make things. And right now I'm working on something in um, like a huge rock inside of a, inside of a reserve, a, a, a garden reserve in uh, in Canada. And we are wondering right now like what type of scan would be the best thing? Would it be lidar? Would it be photogrammetry? Right. And it's it's always about who is available, what type of technology we have the, 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 the way to afford. So it, it's never the same. And that's also one of the problem, so to say, and the challenge is just mm -hmm. that you never work with the same canvas. You never work with the same template. It's, mm -hmm. it's not like you are doing a Game of Thrones season and you always stick with the same kind of delivery all the time. And, but it's just the effect themselves change. Right now, everything's changed. Yeah. You, you cannot yeah. use your same uh, after effect or your same... Uh, yeah. X particle simulation because the size are not the same and you have to stick to the template. So it's a lot yeah. of adaptation that you have to do when you start over there. Yeah, you're starting from scratch every time. And <laughs> we were fairly successful with the uh, the photogrammetry that we did. Mm -hmm. It lined mm -hmm. up pretty yeah. well. You know, I was a little nervous about that, actually. We, yeah. we did have measurements and stuff. But, you know, it, it was a little bit uh, nerve-wracking uh, just because you're like, I, I hope this works when we get there. Yeah. Uh, I feel yeah, like yeah. LiDAR is probably a little more accurate yeah. in that sense because you get a little bit of that. Um, uh, I mean, at least the measurements with the LiDAR are, are going to be very accurate as opposed to just kind of. The, yeah. Um, and it's physically you know. based. I mean, you, uh, with some of the LiDAR stuff, you already have the information when you scan with the LiDAR. Like it's already having some uh, physical information inside of that. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Man, your bandwidth just took a complete crash. I don't yeah, know I don't know. I think I, uh, I thought it was at nine point, but I'm sorry. But it's all right. You're uploading something big in Dropbox right yeah, now. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, it sounds good, though, so we'll just keep going yeah. and hope that it pops back in. It usually does. Um, so I was going to ask you about the things like the tracking stuff, right? You got like the balloons you were talking about that were tracked. Mm -hmm. You can't necessarily track everything with like Z-depth especially things that are really far away. How do you go about nope. doing that sort of tracking? <clears throat> it's more a responsibility from the uh, interactive department, but mostly we try to use either Kinect stuff. So you kind of use that with infrared, but it has its own software that kind of deal with the, with the, with the information itself. It transforms the information to something that you can use. You also have, uh, we use a lot of uh, LiDAR, but like way more advanced than what you have on your iPhone or on your iPad. So. Mm -hmm. we, we use LiDAR to be able to scan people to be sure that they are at that position on a field that we determine, for example. But that's mostly it. Or is a infrared camera, normal camera feed, it's, it's a lot of different types of techniques. And I think that LiDAR is the one that we use the most when we do, for example, um, a floor. When you have people interacting with a floor or anything, it just detects exactly where they, where they are. And you can put multiple of them at the same, uh, on the yeah. same uh, venue. And just be sure that you triangulate kind of the, the position of the, of the characters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you have something like uh, like a part of a building that's curved, this is something that I haven't had to deal with yet. But how do you mm. deal with the throw of the projector and the focus if something is a weird shape? Yeah. We have some uh, some software that are used to uh, calculate 
all that side of stuff. So are your pixels going to be banned because of the way your projectile is positioned? Do you have a way to make them blend all together? That's, um, we have something in house called the Hexagora that we developed that help us making the, the projection uh, mapping uh, study. And then it's also, once again, like, is it preferable for you to have one big projector that is doing the whole show or multiple ones that have maybe a smaller resolution, but that you can at least split and have a, a full show? The most problematic thing with something that is curved, as you say, is that you don't have any, any way to be sure that everything is lined up the same way, like between the content mm -hmm. and between the physicality of the object itself. So we had an issue with, uh, we were doing like, um, that uh, there was an, am an am amusement park, sorry, in uh, Seoul that we did, I think, two or three years ago. And it was a really huge two walls that were completely curved inside of uh, an in-house uh, fed foreign, so an amusement park. And yeah, it was impossible to just see exactly because it's a, it's a flat, but it's a, it's a curve, but with absolutely no, nothing on it. It's, it's a it's smooth surface. So it was really uh, an issue with uh, with the integrator to be able to just make it fit the, the the right positioning. So it took a lot of uh, trial and errors, and also everybody, everyone, when everyone uh, was working on the catwalk on top to deal with the light, it just offset the projector just one millimeter. But you know, it's that one millimeter that is messing around with the uh, with the whole projection after that. So it's okay. it's just that complicated. It's it's yeah. a dedicated job to be able to just make those things fit together. Do, how how involved do you get with the interactive portion of it? You know, I know touch designers involved, but like, are you mm -hmm. doing a lot of back and forth, or are there a bunch of team members working on specific pieces? Uh, we it, also yeah, it depends a lot on the project because of uh, how interactive wants to work and how content wants to work. There's some kind of security in the fact that you have something pre-rendered, like you you have a sequence that you can just press play. And all you have to deal with is how the time code is going to be read. And then you have those show in which uh, interaction is the main attraction to the show. So mm -hmm. we we did two months, three months ago, we did something in Denver called the Mia Wolf. Oh, and yeah. And it's actually you enter in a room <clears throat> and it's one big uh, vinyl of a uh, forest scene that was done by the client in uh, Cinema 4D using Octane. Mm -hmm. So it was just a lot of scans of tree all around the and same. It's, it's like a. I think it was more than uh, 15K wide to work with the whole scene that they made for the print. And then um, everything went to touch designer with, by using uh, normal maps, BDEV, uh, position pass. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of technicity to make um, a lot of the effect working. And uh, we, we had motion designer in-house making smaller portion of content. So something a bit more animated, but only on 220 frames, for example. And it's just like a, a sprite sheet that you can put right. in a, in a touch then after that and you just right. play it the more closer you get to a point of interest the farther it goes on the timeline of that clip okay mm -hmm. well, that, so that, it's, it's a lot of trick yeah that we try to do yeah it, that seems but i sorry i, I told you <laughs> sorry the bandwidth is is getting no. weird <laughs> yeah, hanging it just up seems, and then seems really really weird on. but the, the yeah you why don't you uh, uh, i can try uh, to if... just cut the webcam also and just I was going to say, if you just want to hang up and rejoin the call, it actually sometimes fixes it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's try to do that. Sorry for that. Oh, no, no you're worries. Fine. No worries. That helps most of the time, you know. So, yeah, man, that's, gosh, the the scale of it is, is pretty incredible. There we go. And I'm back. That's a little bit there better, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. way better. Cool. There we go. Cool. Sorry cool. about that. Um, no, you're fine. So, um, Meow Wolf is they're expanding right they they got mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the colorado one the, one of them is like a grocery store i don't know which one that is that's uh vegas oh that's the vegas one okay. yeah all right cool and we worked yeah. in the one in uh, denver and i think that uh, because of that we have new clients contacting us just because they saw what we did for mia wolf mm -hmm. and they want us to to make something like that for other other type of, uh, of project uh, all around the world that's one of the things we we work all around the world honestly since i worked since started work there Five years ago, I went to South Asia, I went to the US, I went to Europe. It's pretty uncommon for motion designer that uh, once again used to spend a lot of time in front of computer to just go over there. We went a, a full month in Hong Kong. I went uh, three weeks in uh, in Seoul. So it's it's so, so cool to be able to yeah. have that perk of uh, working and working uh, 
abroad. But with COVID, of course, it's getting way more yeah. complicated, but it's starting yeah. to come back slowly. But that's, uh, that's yeah. uh, one of the big things. What's the process like, the, the creative process in planning it out? You know, you've got a whole team and everything. And, and do, do you start with pictures of it? Do you ever like mock anything up with like maybe garbage max, masks or something in After Effects and mess around mm -hmm. and just come up with ideas? Or what's the process like? The first thing we do with that, that we send the team um, in in location just to be sure that we take as much reference picture as possible, mm -hmm. because once again it's never the same the same type of building and sometimes mm -hmm. just being there seeing that gives you ID because you're like oh well that huge uh, aquarium in Hong Kong that kind of looked like an octopus so hey that, yeah. why not trying to make an octopus but will we be able to see it? Uh, so that's the first step. We send people over there, a creative team and also a technical team to try to make some first test and first uh, first uh, measurement and then depending on the project sometimes the client has ideas that they want to push that they want to like some mm -hmm. thematic that they want to get to give and sometimes we have a full like a uh, white card a full creative process uh, ahead of us that we can decide and that's uh, the, the one that are the more the more uh, interesting for the artist of course to have like way more uh, liberty in the creation because when you work with huge ips like amusement park and mm -hmm. things like that. I'm trying to be as vague as possible. <laughs> sure. uh, when you work with huge IPs like that, you are kind of bound to uh, respect what is going to be done. You have to reproduce something that has been done in a movie or in another commercial. So you have to, to stick to that. But when you have the full creative process uh, ahead of you, then it's, it's mostly about, uh, about making things that you think are going to look good. So yeah. we have a director and an art director working together with a concept writer to be sure that we are develop, developing also the story of the, cool. the thing that we are about trying to make. Also, we try to be sure that what we do fits with the local culture of where we are gonna, we're gonna do the show. Because mm -hmm. if you use a lot of, for example, white petal in something, and then you went to China and you basically understand that white petals mean death, you're like, hmm, that's, okay. that's really right. not what I meant. That's really, right. really not what I meant. Yeah. So it's mostly about that. The, the concept writer and the, the research team are doing an amazing work to be sure that we are on point with the signification, with the name, with everything. And then after that, of course, a lot of client validation as always in, uh, in every domain. And then we, we go a bit more in um, not the concept phase, but the design phase and then production and then integration. And no Winnie the so, Pooh in China. And no Winnie, no Winnie the Pooh in China. No, yeah. no, no. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. That's funny. Um, if somebody, if somebody is like, uh, wanting to work there or, you mm -hmm. know, for example, if you're looking to hire, what kind of skills are necessary? Like, does everybody need to have a knowledge of touch designer interactive? Do you have people that are like just cinema, just modeling, just certain things? Yeah. As I was saying, interactive is completely another department. So if you mm -hmm. have knowledge on that and you want to work in the content department, that's, that's super nice because you will understand what the interactive team will need and you are going to be more inclined to work on interactive driven project mm -hmm. but we have all types of, uh, <clears throat> of profile honestly i'm using only uh, cinema 4d and after effect and a bit arnold also uh, on my personal work and on some of the project that we have but i'm, I'm never touched octane like almost never touched octane only to open someone else's file and change one shader and relaunch mm -hmm. the render so we don't have any prerequisite to like skills that you need to have yeah the thing is you will have to adapt a lot like we have people sure. that are yeah. on maya and are only on maya nuke so of course when we have something way more uh, 3d driven something with more character animation and a lot of rendering then we will open the, the more 3d part of the team of the motion and 3d team mm -hmm. but we, we try to make so people can have the time to learn new stuff of course it's always depending on how much free time we have to, sure. to make them le learn new things but I got friends that are really specialized in Cinema 4D X Particles, some others that are more after effect, comp driven. So it's really depending on the project. It's always complicated when you have a team of like right now we are, I think, 90 in the content department mm -hmm. and we have uh, 25 to 30 motion designers slash 3D artists. So it's always complicated when you have a team of that uh, many people big, to be sure that everybody team, is yeah. exactly on the right type right. of project for him or for her. That's the, the, the issue of working in a company. Like you have to stay occupied. So sometimes you will end up on projects that are not your cup of tea, but yeah. you actually have the time to learn a bit. But mm -hmm. that's Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to ask. So they're like learning yeah. opportunities. Like if you're a 3D person, you're like really digging what you're seeing in touch designer and interactive. Um, is there opportunity to learn there? 
the, well, the opportunity will depend on do we need you to be doing three content right now for a, for a project? Because if we need you to be working on client project, then right. that will be the priority all the time. Right. But mm -hmm. as soon as you have free time, which I'm not going to lie, it's not happening a lot right now. But as, <laughs> sure. as soon as you have a free time available in front of you, uh, you usually have the, the perfect right to just go using a formation. We have in-house formation. We also have like outsourced formation. Like we have some of the of the... We have GSG Plus for the people that want to learn uh, Sigma 4D. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of trainings that are already prepared for, for that. And I'm trying to make also small trainings for in-house tool. So that's a part of, yeah. uh, of my job right now. It's to make some small video on how to use ShotGrid, how to use some of the scripts that are developed in-house. Because we realized that we had amazing um, people doing script in-house, but no one was using them because they didn't want to read the, the simple manual. Like the, They didn't want to go <laughs> yeah. to the wiki page and, and yeah, read. So we made video if, so it's easier for them to... To, to ingest that information. Motion but designers don't to, like yeah. to read. No, no, no sure. one. No they one won't even read their emails. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Slack. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, are you getting a lot of sleep? Uh, are, how is the workload? Are you... Uh, uh, it are depends. You I think it depends on the on the person also. Uh, when I started, I was making way more of the time than I'm doing right now. But it's mm -hmm. because I kind of felt insecure because of the level of the other people in that company. Like, you arrived in a team that has been doing that for five sometimes mm. ten years mm -hmm. and you think that you that you can do it also because you've done motion design before i mean you, you've worked before so why not and then you arrive and you kind of hit a wall of like that's really not what i was expecting that's the render are taking so much time i cannot do what i was what i was doing before and then you slowly like learn after that to 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 go a bit more to be faster to be more intelligent on where you should spend time because in that type of company it's Every project is the priority number one project. If you listen to, to people, it's like, mm -hmm. it's it's you need to focus on that only. And sometimes, taking the time to uh, make the right the, the 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 right thing, the right animation to polish a bit, it's a luxury that we don't always have. But sometimes it's better to to do that and to take the time to have a bit more of content before making any assumption of is it going to be good or not at the end. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of uh, of working at Moment Factory, I was doing way more of the time than right now. And right now I'm just trying to like, because I know that the integration are so intense uh, rhythm wise, like integration is uh, when we go on site once again, but it's a 90 hours a week. Sometimes it's a hundred mm -hmm. hours a week wow. sometimes. So you yes. have to keep your energy before when you are doing the project, when you are just in the conception phase, when you are in the production phase, you have to eat the deadline, of course, but you have to do like, it's, it's not a, it's not a, a run. It's a marathon all the time. Right. And right now we work on projects that are six months in the making, seven months or a year in the making. Wow. So you don't want to burn yourself too soon. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. How many projects are you working on at any one time? Uh, depending on the type of profile you have, either it's you are dedicated to one project, but you only do that and you work 40 hours, 45 hours a week on, yeah. mm -hmm. on it. Or sometimes you are more like a specialist. For example, we, we had a, a guy, Maxim Ford, doing a lot of Houdini simulation. Mm -hmm. So he was asked to work on a lot of small projects, but was kind of a, of a problem for me wasn't working on a project he was giving a hand like just doing one thing sure. and then hopping back to something else so you don't feel that much sorry you don't feel that much involved in a project as you were mm -hmm. if you were working like six months right. in the tunnel with that but we have the other part like people that are working six months in t six months in tunnel are like i'm not sure what i'm doing that anymore because you are just so focused on that one small thing that mm -hmm. you, you want to have some else so it's really hard to strike a, a good balance between being right. focused on something and not overloading people with 10 projects at the same time sure yeah because you want to have a good balance so you don't get burned mm -hmm. out but at the same time exactly. you want to have enough involvement so you're putting your heart into it i guess mm -hmm. um, yeah exactly and so do you get a lot of extra time to work on anything on the side like do you feel burnt out or, or do you still at the end of the day do you want to get in front of the computer again an experiment that's that's something that i feel well more because of the pandemic like i used to like doing stuff on my computer when i come home mm -hmm. and right now uh, we we start to go back to the um, to the office way more often and it's refreshing to see people to be at the office to have like that that working space i was hearing the interview last week with uh, andre mm -hmm. uh, right mm -hmm. and <clears throat> and i think that he was saying that pandemic had a good impact on him because he could focus on stuff I'm the complete opposite. Like I'm, I need to see yeah. people. I need to go yeah. somewhere to make myself in a space in which mentally I can I can work on that. Mm -hmm. And going back to the office kind of saved me regarding that. But it's mostly like I'm working with uh, with waves of motivation. Like I started doing some NFTs uh, in March, 
mm-hmm. of uh, 2020, mm-hmm. 2021, 2021, sorry. And uh, I feel like it was so exciting for the first time in a while. I was super excited to make stuff, to make every week something different. And at what time you just have that project at, at work that kind of cuts the, the wave, cuts the, your, your momentum. And it's super mm-hmm. hard to go back. It's the same thing with going to the gym. Like, as long as you are doing it all the time, it's yeah. easy to to get in the in the rhythm. But as long as you stop one week, it's it's yep. so complicated to come back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I try to stay as less as possible in front of the computer when I when I stop working. But honestly, it's uh, it's just that my computer was my safe space before. Like it was the place mm-hmm. I could go on YouTube. I could just play video games. And right now, I'm one window away of uh, looking at work stuff. Yeah. Right. So yeah, it's. Yeah, yeah. I think that a lot of us are struggling with that. Just yeah. understanding what part of your natural of your home is is supposed to be dedicated to work and how much is still that fun place that you like to have fun. Uh, you like to have fun in. Yeah. Uh, so I think that it's depending on people. As once again, people loved having that kind of uh, going back on themselves during the pandemic and having more time to do uh, stuff uh, at their home. Also, I'm more on the opposite uh, opposite side. What, I'm just that? reading the the question. Oh, the uh, question. Yeah. About, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I use uh, I use Xparticle. Mm-hmm. We I, I tried actually I learned it during a project at Moen Factory. Mm-hmm. Um, that's also the thing. Like we kind of had the time some time to learn while producing. It's just that the the pressure of being able to actually deliver at the end is way more intense than just hey I'm gonna do a tutorial on Xparticle. Yeah. But uh, the Nightbird project are the one in which nothing is never validated by the client. For example, so you have clients that are uh. kind of shady in the way they validate stuff like you never know exactly and since we have sometimes projects that are taking so much time to render that we have to have at one point a validation in which we can just agree on and then Mm -hmm. go on to something more important but i think that right now just to have a little um, a little uh, parenthesis a little um, bubble we are making um, an animation of a waterfall for a huge project the simulation is done. It was done uh, using uh, Houdini. I think the render time that we estimate for that render is going to be eight months. What? What? <laughs> so, so you need to be sure about what you're going to deliver to the client at the end of those eight months. Oh so you see, it's it's gosh. really just those kind of things. If if you manage to have a good relationship with your client, with your client and they understand the problematics and they you That's can teach like them. Eight months <sighs> on one computer, right? That's like no. actually using the farm. A part of the farm, yeah, as the on the back burner. Whoa, and need to call stuff. Jules and see, right? <laughs> well, wow. Well, but... Okay. Well, is uh, I'm guessing that's because of the resolution, a exactly. and mm-hmm. probably the sim is probably just ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, because it's because of the fact it's so huge, and yeah. you know that people are gonna be really close to it. You have to have a good resolution of that. Wow. So it's not like it's something in the background. We we often use stock footage when we want to fake simulation. Mm-hmm. Like we just try to make either style transfer or kind of mm-hmm. small tricks with a particular and try to replicate that mm-hmm. here you have something interacting with the with the way the building is made and interactive with the uh, with forms that mm-hmm. are coming on it yeah, so yeah. you don't oh, have the time wow. <clears throat> Sorry. Well, what render engine is that uh for that specific project i'm not sure honestly i think it's going to be arnold i'm not sure about okay. that so but CP, because we have so... a lot of maya yeah yeah, because we have a lot right. of Maya licenses, we have a lot of Arnold licenses that are floating mm-hmm. between uh, Maya and Cinema 4D, so it's super nice because even if it's a bit slower than Octane, Redshift, and everything like that, CPU rendering is something that it's easy to scale on and to, to keep building on sure. that. And also it's a bit more reliable, I would say, for those kinds of resolution. Mm-hmm. Just because we have those problematic of hiring people that are making super good Instagram posts, but when they oh. arrived on, uh, at our place and it's like, okay, so... Right now it's going to be 10k on five. Go, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> make me that neon sign that you like uh, to make uh, every time. And yes. It's right. just so noisy to make something like that. So yeah, it's a, it's yeah. a lot of uh, it's a lot of technical steps to to understand. And at the beginning, you you are kind of against that. You should not use that red You should not use that plugin. But after mm-hmm. a while, you're like, man, I got a, a colleague at work, Greg, that say no plugin, no cry, because every <laughs> time we have an issue in integration, it's because of one plugin that just fucked up on the farm or something like that. Mm-hmm. So it's just, uh-huh. and when you have to check frame by frame a render to be sure that you don't have like that one flash of, uh, yeah. of white like rendering. Like X or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so, that's so <laughs> stressful, honestly. But that's, uh, that's if I had to say about the biggest nine pair, it's just uh, render time and uh, being sure that the, the client is expecting the right thing. 
Eight months. Wow. <laughs> yep. Eight months. That's insane. Mm. If somebody wanted to get into this, let's say, and mm -hmm. maybe even on a small scale, you know, like I know, like, uh, you know, VJ here in the chat, he does some of this stuff. Um, like if somebody wanted to get started and maybe get like a program, maybe test it out themselves, maybe get a projector, maybe just start, you know, playing around. Like, do you, Are there any resources that that you could recommend? Um... I'm not that much on the technical part of how to set that up, but I think that Mad Mapper and there are some yeah. other like small project, yeah. small uh, program that you can use to make a small project. And mostly it's uh, it's about like trying. Honestly, if you have um, if you have a, a projector, the easiest thing that you can do is being able to install NDI all the NDI uh, licenses yeah. on your on your computer, mm -hmm. so you can be able to actually uh, project what your After Effects workspace is to the projector directly. Yeah. So you can, for example, just put a projector mm -hmm. and use masks to test, like, I'm at, at, I'm at the right position right now, and you can almost, like, make your template live with that. Right. When we went to the Hong Kong, to the aquarium thing, that's what we did. We, we just hooked up a super simple laptop to the projector with NDI, mm -hmm. and we just tried to see, like, okay, that part of the projector is not working for the blending. Um, uh, with the integrator, I was asking, like, do you want me to make a mask really quickly? He's like, well, if, if you can make it, yeah, because it would take me, like, 30 minutes just to make that. After effect, mm -hmm. bim bam boom. Yeah. You just have that and you export the image for him and then yeah. you have it on the software. Yeah, wow. and, and NDI or or Adobe products have that now. They have the yep. the output you can output to a screen, you know, when you go to your, your display output mm -hmm. in the preferences, you can go to a screen and say, Oh, use this four K you know, T V I have over here or whatever, but now there's also the the option for NDI out. And that can mm -hmm. go anywhere on your network mm -hmm. as long as you yeah. get a decent network. And uh, I can imagine that makes that very easy because you just yeah I, I doing even it on made sometimes that in a, in using Wi-Fi on a yeah. on a closed location in house yeah. that was like a that amusement park that had the bend uh, wall mm -hmm, we just mm -hmm. we are just like moving around the space with the laptop and just saying like hey because we we do a lot of content but we also do a lot of uh, content that is going to light bulbs LED strips and sometimes it's mostly about like hey is the mapping working correctly so we just move one square. One at a time, and you see, ah, oh, that's the right, that's the right bulb, that's the right uh, LED yeah. thing, and just go over the whole template like that. So it's yeah. super easy to just go with your laptop do it with the Wi-Fi. You won't have the same uh, resolution and the same uh, right. uh, speed for answering things. But honestly, it's it's super it's super effective. And if you manage to have your projector and you can secure how it's um, how it's hooked up, so it's not going to move a lot, you can like put it in a box, just being sure that no one is going to move it during your test. Then going through NDI and with After Effects directly, I think it's the the, the best thing because yeah. after that you can just export the real footage at the end, and just mm -hmm. render it and directly put it in the yeah, on the on the project. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, and and some uh, NDI options sometimes have like a low bandwidth option mm -hmm. on them too that you can check and yeah. say, hey, I'm on like a pretty crappy network or Wi-Fi. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, focus so... on the speed rather than the quality of the image itself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's any other questions in, in the chat, but uh, if you have any, this would be Someone the time. asked, uh, uh, do you have a nightmare job? No, that you, you already talked about, about that. Oh, yeah. okay. Sorry. <laughs> that's uh, that's the, the previous question. Yeah. Uh, the VRAM, mm -hmm. let's see. VRAM would be an issue with the kind of resolution you're working mm -hmm. on. How do you handle the VRAM? Um, are these these playback machines playing back? Um, I know a lot of them will play back in sections. Mm -hmm. You've got different playback devices. Like, I don't know, what is it? D3 or whatever it's called. And... Uh, it's it's mostly like we have to make some tests on what type of uh, codec also we can use to to make right. the content. Sometimes we also need to have alpha to be able to have capsules that are working on top of each other and right. transiting from one to another. So mm -hmm. that's a lot of technical issue. And also, uh, depending on the of the frame rate of each uh, each region we work on, sometimes we need to like the movement is just not working at 30 fps. We need to mm -hmm. bump to 60, and you're like, okay, so my render are going to be doubled. That's <laughs> that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's super fine. Yeah. So you just need to be sure that your server are handling that type of uh, that type of um, of video file, and that it can be played back. So it's a lot of tests uh, as soon as possible in the production to be sure that everything is working on. But sometimes you arrive in integration and it's not working, and you're like, okay, we don't have time to panic. It's time to find solution and. It's just like, what can we afford in the time that we have with the render farm that we have on site to do? So it's mostly like, you have to be, if you want to work at Moment Factory, you have to be a problem solver more than, a, yeah. I would have done that differently. That's cool. Honestly, that's fine. At the end of the project, you can we can have a huge discussion about how it could have been made. But at one point, we just need to be made and to be right. usable. 
So yeah. mm-hmm. and so working in team also, we need to yeah. work as a team for that. So it's uh, it's super important. I was really impressed uh, with some of the things that uh, Sabor was telling me about Mad Mapper because I haven't played with Mad Mapper in quite a while. It was kind of mm-hmm. the early days, and and I kind of been doing other things since. But um, he, I don't know if you saw the 3D Motion show last week, but he projection mapped on his house for Halloween, mm-hmm. and he had He's a whole done it a couple of years, yeah, yeah. And it's this year cool. was just over the top. Like it's like, yeah. dude, I I have always wanted to projection map on my house for Same. like Christmas or something. And now he's like getting my mind thinking. It's like, okay, well, Mad Mapper is making it a lot easier. So, even the like... simplest thing that you could do is, uh, you know, those kind of uh, frosted, um, frosted layer that you can put on windows. I have one just yeah. right there, just for privacy, uh, because mm-hmm. it's cutting on the street. That's actually a pretty nice surface to test stuff like mm-hmm. you can do for the Halloween. I had friends that were making that on the on the glass door, just projecting from the inside. On, yeah. the, um, on the frosted layer and that pretending that there was zombie inside of the house bumping at the door and yeah, uh, putting like uh, hand paints of, uh, of, of uh, blood everywhere. So that's mm-hmm. actually something that you can do super simply. Just put your projector somewhere in your house, either on, a, on that kind of a layer of a frosted layer or even in, a, in an mm-hmm. empty, uh, empty frame just to physically make people think that you have some kind of uh, depth inside of that and trying to, mm-hmm. to test just, hey, I'm going to extrude out of it and I'm going to make stuff falling from the top like a uh, classic GSG ball simulation, right. that mm-hmm. is, that is shiny balls yeah. that are going over there. And just trying yeah. to see, like, does it work? Uh, is it, uh, is it uh, working mm-hmm. enough? And that's super easy to make and it's super, uh, a good step, a good first step in that. Yeah, I had a bunch of uh, arched <clears throat> windows in that when I did like a decade ago. And that's exactly what I did is I took uh, all the windows and I created uh, collider objects for those and yeah. the old GSG balls falling on, on top <laughs> of it. And it just looked like they were bouncing around between the windows, filling yeah, up, that's the, a, filling that's up the structure. That's the, the type of project that works That works 100% of the time. When it works, mm-hmm. it's it's always uh, amazing to people that to guess that don't yeah. know a lot about that kind of thing. And also to kids, honestly, making that kind oh, of yeah. show for kids. It's mm-hmm. so fun to to see them because the, one of the things is that you see how people are watching your show. Like when you go on site, when you go in Hong Kong and you have people in the park looking at the type of show that you make and you can see kids' face, people's face it being amazed nice. by something. <laughs> you just sweat so much during all that production time trying to be sure that that particle is looking nice. And you just have kids saying like, hey, it's a bird. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're just super yeah. amazed by that. Just amazed by the animation and the character that are, that are on, uh, on screen. But then you're like, hey, maybe they don't care about how the particular are behaving right now. But that's right. fine. They have yeah. fun. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> yeah, and it's fun doing that and playing with I, – I love doing the shadow gags, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. where, where stuff looks like it's popping out at you and stuff. And you just take that geometry from what you're building on and use it to create shadows or throw lights mm-hmm. at it. You know, I saw one that was in, I think, New York uh, just a couple days ago. It was on Facebook or something, and it was uh, a kind of a – one of those corners – uh, yeah. where they've got the that LED. only works in one view because yeah. it's bended completely. So if you yeah, work yeah, five meters away, the, the illusion is completely broken. But right. the posts on Facebook are looking super nice. And uh, right. you think that's the, best, that's the best type of screen because you have that kind of feeling of depth inside of the building just mm-hmm. because of the fact it's an angle. So that's, uh, that's super sure. But I yeah. always have to make the, the statement that when you move, it's not going to work because we have clients yeah. mm-hmm. telling us like, hey, but I saw that on Facebook and we can feel like it's inside of the column. I'm like, yep. Not going to yeah. work with your show, man. It's From not across work. the street, yeah, but that's <laughs> it. Yeah. And I imagine it's a little bit easier if you're doing it on LED, too, because you don't have, to, mm-hmm. don't have to worry about all that other stuff, you know? I mean, you have to mm-hmm. worry about the, the shape of it a little bit, but, like, you're not as worried about, oh, how are we going to project this, you know? Yeah. So. Just the technicality behind it is completely different, and we did something in uh, Dallas for the AT&T uh, headquarter, and it's, oh, I think really? it's a, a screen of uh, five stories tall almost. Mm-hmm. on the building oh. itself and that is also bent a bit <clears throat> so we have some uh, capsule in which we do that type of uh, it's something that you can see uh, inside of it but it's only working from the the plaza in front of it like if you are in a building um, across the street at a higher level you will be mm-hmm. completely uh, bent and deformed but if you're yeah. on the plaza it's working super fine did you meet any of the video people at at t no, I didn't have the chance to go there. I, I worked a lot on the project, but it uh, it happens during the pandemic, so it was easier to send people with American visa already over there. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. Yeah. So during the project that I was making, uh, they sent people from US, and now I I can't afford to go uh, in a, in a project 
for on integration for a week or two because I'm asked to be present for other projects. So it's yeah. I'm mean, in the transition right now. I was a motion designer and now I'm more CG supervisor on a Cinema 4D project. So I'm more trying to help yeah. people mm -hmm. deliver the things. So. We met some of those people over there. Um, oh, did really? like a, a week of Cinema 4D, Cinema 4D training with them there. Mm -hmm. So oh, I was cool. curious if you had met them. But <laughs> um, We're going to do a, a little segment called MoGraph Recommends where we're going to ask you some of your favorite things yep. and uh, see if, if we think this uh, influences what you do or if it's just completely <laughs> separate. I don't know. Uh, do, do, does popular culture, movies and things ever influence what you're creating uh does do you do you get ideas from places like that uh, well for personal work of course i think we are all influenced by the stuff that uh, that uh, that we see around us but for a project since it's really depend on uh who we are working with sometimes they really want to stick to something that they want like it's once again a huge high ip you cannot be influenced by other type of movie than that type of movie but Recently, we had a lot of a neon project, like everybody wanted to have neon vapor wave renders. So it, mm -hmm. it kind of influenced the, it's not that it influenced us, it's influencing everybody that is seeing those type of, uh, that is going to those type of exposition or to those type mm -hmm. of uh, events. So people want to make stuff that other, uh, that the public is going to like. So they tend to go to, to those kinds of uh, artistic direction. Mm -hmm. But on, on the work side, I cannot be that much influenced, but on my personal side, yeah, I, I really enjoy going through Instagram, trying to see <clears throat> artists that I like. And I'm still, I feel like we are all always in the learning process. So I, I try to just see something that I like and try to understand how it's made. And usually as soon as I realize how it's made, I'm never finishing the project. And I have like 15 open Cinema 4D files that I never finished about <laughs> stuff that I wanted to test. Like try modeling. Hey, cool. But I modeled it. That's fine. Let's go to something else. <laughs> but that's, uh, that's, uh, that's one of the curse of uh, like just like wanting me. to understand things. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us this, what is your, and again, these, uh, I say this every week, but, uh, this can be your favorite current thing, whatever we ask, mm -hmm. or it could be all time, you know? Okay. Uh, so, uh, we'll start with your favorite movie. Um, like the one that I really like to see every time it's uh, back to the future, the first episode, yeah. like it's something that I, that I grew up with and that I really enjoy watching. And the one movie that I watch every time I'm doing something important in my life is uh, Old Boy from uh, Park Chan Wook. The, the okay. story of someone trying to seek revenge, and it's a South Korean movie from, I, I think, one. 2006. There is, I, the, it's known because of that one scene of fight in a corridor that, is, um, that has absolutely no cut, and you follow someone fighting against, I think, 20, 50 people using a hammer and everything. It's one of the best uh, fight sequences of cinema, in my opinion. So that's one of the reasons why I love uh, that movie and Back to the Future just because, well, Back to the Future. Man. Because I mean, Back to the Future. Do we yeah. need, do we need, do yeah. we need the explanation? Yeah. Well, Matt has a relevant NFT for that later on that we'll talk yes. about. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the next question is a TV show. I'm watching a lot of, uh, I, I, I had finally a Disney Plus account, so I'm trying to get back on the what if. I, I really loved it. Yeah. Kind of yeah. weird what they did with that episode that didn't hurt, but they still include it in the, in the storyline. I don't know if you've watched it, but it's super weird to see the final to be like, I think I missed something. You mm -hmm. rewatch the list of the episode. You're like, no, oh, I watched everything. And apparently because of the pandemic, they couldn't make one of the episodes. So they just pushed it to season two, but they still yeah, use the characters develop in that episode on the season ending and oh, kind of weird. Weird. And aside to that, uh, I really like watching the morning show right now. Yeah. On the oh, Apple TV. yeah. Apple I couldn't TV. get into that. I couldn't get into it. Like, so I went I in a vacation, episode, like a, I was like, eh, I couldn't, I couldn't really get into it. And of course, like everybody, Ted Lasso. I loved Ted yeah, Lasso, uh, great. Yeah. and it's it's looking super nice. I'm waiting for the next seasons, but mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm pretty common like Office, Friends, stuff like that, like stuff from uh, from the yeah. '90s. Super nice. Yeah, I hear there's a new uh, Tiger King season out right now. Yeah, <laughs> Tiger King <laughs> season two. Yeah. Uh, um. All right, the next one on the list is, uh, what kind of music do you listen to? Mm -hmm. um, it depends between when I work and when I'm just doing other stuff. When I work, mm -hmm. I try to have something that I don't have to focus too much on, but mm -hmm. that has like either like slow-paced lyrics, like Bonobo is the go-to yeah. uh, artist for me oh, to work. It's like really slow-paced and really motivating, but not that many, uh, not that many uh, lyrics in it, so it's easier yeah. to write emails while you do that. Um, other Man, artists I, I need like to right pull now, that up a... and like start listening to them again. You, you reminded ah. me of them. I forgot. Bonobo, the yeah. migration. 
It's a uh, migration. Uh, it's a uh, it's an amazing album. I'm uh, when when I don't work, I'm listening a lot to Glass Animal lately. An amazing band. Uh, they, they, it, they made a lot of. Um, I think they made a, a song that is now in FIFA, so a lot of people knows them because mm. of the, the song that they made. And they're going to be in Montreal in April, so I'm going to see them right. the first show in a while. That's going to be super nice. That's cool. But yeah, that's uh, that's the type of music, and also French rap, things like that. So I won't drop too much name here. I think no one is listening to French rap aside French people, so which is mm. fine, I guess. Mm. But yeah, he got the French monkey. He does French <laughs> rap, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Matt uh, was talking about the song that's in your demo reel. I I hadn't heard it, but I guess yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's actually I think it's uh, it's um about. yeah. Uh, apparently they have it in TikTok because someone made a thing during the pandemic uh, where they they recorded a lot of clips in their own apartment, just changing place because the mu- the music is super has uh, a super huge rhythm. And I think it's yeah. a group that made it to the Eurovision, which is... Uh, yeah, it was the Eurovision. It was, yeah. Like, oh, okay. they, they made it into the Eurovision contest, you know? Just because and of their, their music video was very funny mm. uh, uh, with it. So people on TikTok would spoof it or spoof the, the music video and stuff. It was really funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's why I choose it also. It's because just yeah. it's so catchy and it's yeah. so easy to make an edit on it. That, uh, uh-huh. Yeah. Um, do you listen to podcasts? Well, yes, and that's a recurring joke with my friends. I always suggest My Dad Wrote a Porno, which is the story of... Uh, you never saw that? You never heard about that? It's Mm-mm. it's someone received as a Christmas gift. It's a real story. Someone received as a Christmas gift uh, a pornographic novel from made by his father, and he's just reading it with friends. And it's just, <laughs> oh it's my just amazing to realize that some people have absolutely no base on anatomy or anything, because it's... <laughs> completely out of touch oh that's funny that's really funny. funny uh here's a question from bobby is daft punk not cool in france <laughs> because they're so huge? oh well they they are cool and uh that's just like the base of everything the, of the french touch but um since uh, they're not gonna make any more content that's the thing yeah, i would yeah. have loved to be able to see i had the occasion when i was in strasbourg they made um the, their last show alive they made it in the les, les Eurokian de belfort which is a huge festival I would have been able to be there because I was in Strasbourg at that time and I completely missed the opportunity. So I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm kind of mad at myself at, my, at Daft Punk just because of that. But uh, that's uh, really yeah. uh, not a good location for the for the hatred. It's more supposed to be centered on me. But yeah, I really would have loved at least one yeah, more I mean, album before they before they finished well, it off. Yeah. You know, but uh, let's see, plug in. You can't use yeah. Render Engine, and I know mm-hmm. no plug in, no cry. But what plug in? I try to use plugins that are not affecting the render itself, but more like the the way you work. So my sure. go-to plugin, it's a free one. It's made by a French guy. It's called Duik on After Effects, oh, yeah. U-I-K. Yeah. And it's amazing what we can do with that. I'm giving online classes on After Effects, and that's one of the plugins that we, we try to focus on just because of the fact that it's super easy to make a rig I'll be right for, for character, but of course for other things also like just making a car rig that you can make uh, it move uh, in the, a fake 3D space. Duik is yeah. so powerful and it has so much tool to make your workflow faster. Just the fact of renaming a bunch of sequence, a bunch of, uh, of uh, composition and being able to just um, numero them, it's so easy to use. And it doesn't have effect on a render farm, for example. So you don't need to have it installed on every computer on the farm. You just need to use it as a tool on your right. computer, which is super yeah. nice, honestly. Yeah, because it creates all the layers and all the things. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's so, so simple yeah. to use. Yeah, my daughter, uh, she's um, 11, almost 12. She, a couple months ago, she's been doing so much animating of characters on her phone. Oh, wow. You know, and like keyframing and all of this complicated stuff on her phone. And I'm like, you should try this. So she went through a whole tutorial on Do It and made an intro for her YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, wow. Using that. <laughs> yeah. Do that it, was so cool know. at 12. That's yeah, amazing. She, she took a character she made. We cut it all up and brought in Illustrator. We just did all of that, and then wow. we went through a, a tutorial on it. She did pretty well. Um, and then uh, what is your go-to app? What is your muscle memory app on your phone? I, I think it's kind of a problem, but Instagram is uh, like the, yeah. the kind of thing that you, you do as a time killer, as um, every time you are in public transportation, every time you just have uh, that, uh, that time between meeting. I don't know why I go there all the time to, to see if anything new happen. And usually nothing new happened regarding me. It's more like the community itself, and it's super nice to, to be present around that. But I don't have to look at that often, but I, I really I can't not go 
to to Instagram all the time. I'm I used to be that way. Now I'm a little bit more like Reddit, TikTok. No, oh, yeah, Reddit also. But you Reddit know. is more on the on the. I don't like that much the app, the official yeah. app. I, I tried Apollo. Not a huge fan also, but I'm more like, since I'm always in front of a computer, I'm always looking at Reddit. And also it's a right. good way of keeping in touch with the motion design community. There are lots of subreddit yeah. about After Effects, Cinema 4D, NFTs. Mm -hmm. And it's super nice to see like what is going on and all the people that are making content to help other. Yeah. That's that's one thing also, but uh, yeah. Um, the next one on the list is favorite video game. I'm spending way too much time on the Smash Bros Ultimate, honestly. That's on, like on my- what? Smash Bros. Oh, okay. All right. That that's the the fighting game that I love the yeah. most. I can play that with with friends. And yeah. last year I also played a lot um, Hades, the super giant game, that won a lot of uh, awards. It's super well built. The art direction is amazing. The storyline behind that is amazing also. And they also make all their visual effects in After Effects, and they made some quick uh, tutorial like uh, how to make things. And it's super cool when big company are just showing like how sometimes. Stuff as simple to produce is just like how you build on simple effects that don't require license that are just in after effect by itself. And it's just a creative way of using really, really simple stuff. And I loved the, the fact that they do that. And I'm, I'm using that with my student as much as I can as a reference. Like this is something that won so many awards about the, the quality of the animation, the, the, the way it's built. And you don't have to go always to the latest render engine, to the latest trend. Sometimes right. it's about using the right fractal noise and playing with the uh, with yeah. the levels and curve. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you'll have to you have to join us sometime on uh, on uh, Windbush's game night. We play all sorts oh, of yeah. different games. Yeah. Well. And um, any Halo? Been playing that new Halo? It's I started. Good. I started to play the the online uh, beta, and I'm mm -hmm. I realized that I haven't played Halo in 15 years, so I'm yeah. pretty bad at it. <laughs> but the, the the game itself is super nice, so I, I will probably need to get a hold of it. But I'm really really bad, so I'm uh, right now it would be kind of a shame to try to play with people that are showing that because I'm really not not that good at all. Oh, it's all so, right. We're we're all jumping in and realizing that uh, we're still we're, it's almost like starting over again. You know, we're yeah. all learning these new controls and it's all different and everything. So, <laughs> but um, it's 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 just different enough, so you are a bit lost. But you still have all yeah. that muscle memory from your teenage years. It's it's super weird, honestly. Yeah, and my my daughter is playing it on PC, and I was and mm -hmm. she was doing a lot better than Xbox. And I was like, I wonder if I'm good at this if I go to a mouse. The mouse isn't the problem for me. It's it's using the WASD. Mm. I just can't. It's just different. So I bought it. No, I'm using a controller on PC because honestly, yeah. playing with mouse and uh, and the keyboard, it's it's not for me. I mean, the, the accuracy with the mouse is always going to be better, mm. but I just can't navigate myself, you know? Yeah. So I've been using, I just got a, an Elite controller. So, oh, nice. You know, if I just had that one controller, then <laughs> then I'd be yeah, good it's at like, Halo. It's like buying shoes that make lights behind just to run faster, you know? It's, yeah. it's that kind of mm -hmm. philosophy when you are a child. But yeah. Or getting racing stripes on your car makes it go faster. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that's, that has to be like that. <laughs> Now, um, this is a tough one. This is your favorite life hack, and this could be something that's you know super funny or, or uh, a gimmick, or it could be something that's more you know a productivity hack or something like that. And the example we give well, is that Mitch Myers if, says, "If I knew how to make productivity hack, I, I would I would be struggling <laughs> that much with doing a personal project." No, I think that it's really the the, the simple thing about like just how to fold your uh, bag of chips so it holds on itself when you are having stuff like. I don't know oh, if you yeah. do that, you, just, you open it from the top and you just roll the back behind so it stays as like a pot instead of just yeah. being a bag open. That's those kind of really, really small life hack that I that I love. And then there's also all this uh, DIY, but uh, WHY, like all the people that are mm. making a uh, life hack that are completely irrelevant. It's so funny to see that like, hey, you could use that top of a bottle to um, to close your uh, your <laughs> bag of, uh, of dirt. You're like, yeah, we'll just close the bag of dirt and it's... <laughs> It's perfect like that. And you get the guy on TikTok who, yeah. who does who does this who does with his hands. Yeah. Uh oh, Matt's texting me. I'm guessing he might be in the bathroom for a while. Oh. Is he okay? <laughs> That's funny. He said he'll be back in a second. He's, okay. He's doing all right. Just freshening oh. up a bit. You know, <laughs> powdering his nose. Um so that's the life hack and uh yeah, I mean, um you know. Life hacks can be, uh, they can be 
funny and they can be productive, you know? Um, yeah. I think and also there are ones... so many things that you can learn with YouTube. I just bought a, a place recently with my girlfriend and we started to have to do a lot of small things, you know, like um, being sure that everything is uh, is plugged correctly, everything is, uh, is like built correctly. It's just like those small uh, life knowledge about how to deal with the house that I never had to do before in my life. And I'm really not a ND guy. I'm more computer tech guy. So she kind of messed up with me about that. And right now I'm trying to learn like how to make specific types of hole to be sure that everything is uh, is uh, wired the right way and trying to hide stuff. And that's that's basically uh, everything that I'm learning right now on YouTube. But, yeah. yeah. Well, let me text Mac, Matt and see how ah, he's, he's back. Here. He's back. He's back. Oh, he is. He's oh, there back. we go. <laughs> Good. Good. Because it's, it's, it's just about time for the drop. And I was a little worried about that. <laughs> Oh, he's muted. So, yeah, I think he muted uh, Skype. Or it something. was recording. It was recording. It just was yeah, muted on the Skype side. Okay, muted. Yeah. So now that you're done with Sorry. that drop, are you ready for this drop? Ah. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, feeling better. Okay. Uh, cool. Yeah, let's uh, let's do that. Let's go to the drop. The drop. 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 Is this the fucking mic? Drop. This is exactly what I should be doing. <laughs> What's up and welcome to this week's episode of The Drop, your weekly source for all things NFT and crypto art, as well as upcoming drops by notable people in the MoGraph industry. I'm Matt Milstead. Joining me as always is Dave Koss. And Whoa. also joining us this week is Arno Melanger. Hey, nice. Thank well, you. Thank you. <laughs> so we got a lot to talk about this week. We're going to start. A, there's a lot, a lot yeah. of drop news. Yeah. Matt's not feeling well. We're going to start out. I'm not. That's why you hear and, my voice. Uh, and Yeah. No, I'll, I'll do the beginning leave. section. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about the Aria thing, and then you can save yeah. your energy for the drops. And we Appreciate actually that. have quite a bit to talk about here. Um, number one, uh, if you haven't heard, uh, David Aria got hacked pretty bad. Yes. And yes. we're going to talk about it a little bit. He will be here for the Christmas episode, uh, the traditional Christmas episode. And so we will get the full story for it from him. But uh, we, we did want to just talk about it for a minute talk about what happened so that we can help people hopefully mm -hmm. um to watch out for certain things there's a big scam going on and apparently this is huge it's it's not just david it's a bunch of people it's a bunch of people mm -hmm. who own crypto um and what it is it starts with a sim swap or a sim clone mm -hmm. a sim hack if you will uh, this has happened to some of our other friends before as well recently, and all it right. is is people use social engineering and they go into a, uh, a physical store a lot of times, or they'll call on the phone a lot of times a physical store because they have a little more uh, luck doing the whole social engineering thing. And they'll go in and say, oh, yeah. my phone's messed up, I'm having an issue, and I need to get a new SIM card, I, I lost my phone, and all this stuff, and mm -hmm. they, they give a sob story. And yeah. they get a SIM card with somebody's phone, somebody else's phone number, and everybody uses their phone for two-factor authentication. So what happens as soon as you get that, you know somebody's email address. You said, hey, I forgot my <clears> password. <throat> Send me a text to reset my password. And you go in there, and it it uh, in, in David's case, it came up on his phone too, but it was he just couldn't get it fast enough because they were yeah. ready to roll. And so they um, ch immediately changed his email uh, password, mm -hmm. all his log on information because they had the two factor authentication. Then they went mm -hmm. in and they stole his Twitter, they stole his Instagram account, and mm -hmm. uh, they did a few things. Number one, they uh, started talking to David, and, and it's it's kind of weird um, because they're talking to him on his own phone number, right? Mm -hmm. So so like Chelsea is texting David, who is actually the hacker, and the hacker is is replying back, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, he basically got locked out of everything. And yeah. uh, so they're texting back and forth. And you can see here, there's this, this text between them here. It says, uh, it seems like you're not taking me seriously. David, I'm getting bored. The police won't help you. Just hang up the call. Give me your fucking ape or things are going to be hell for you and your family. Basically, yeah. like... Straight up blackmailing this dude. Extorting or, or, him yeah, yeah. for his his uh for his ape, which is it's just crazy. And the other part of this is that since they had his accounts, they start talking to other people, and this is the joke between us and, and Aryev now after the last few days, because you, you got a joke or you'll you know cry. Mm -hmm. Um 
is the the joke is hey, can hey, you do, can me, you a do favor? me a favor and but yeah. they were they were doing this to everybody that he had contacts with and there were people i mean people people love octane jesus you know oh yeah. he's in a jam they'll say oh i need to borrow <clears throat> some money for this rollout yeah. or, or something can you spot me some eth here's my address yeah and i'll pay just, you a hundred bucks tomorrow or something yeah, like I'll that give you yeah some interest back it's so messed up because there are people who are like, yeah, anything for Octane Jesus, you know, it's understandable. Yeah. Um, they just they give him the money. And some even in our, we posted a little warning, even the comments in ours, mm -hmm. there's people in there like, oh, man, I gave him money. I gave him two ETH. I gave him four ETH. Some gave yeah. him more. Some, some, somebody gave their life savings in ETH. Like, it's Whoa. really, it really sucks because yeah. it's just gone. And that's the nature of how crypto works. Is mm -hmm. that it is anonymous and there, there is no turning back. There is no uh, FDIC federally insured like. Right. It's just gone, and yeah. and it's really hurt a lot of people in the community. And I think it's a it's an it, it it sucks, but it's a learning opportunity for all of us to say, you know what, we need to go two factor authentication. Yeah. And in, in with so, authenticator. Yes. So um, uh, I. I, I saw this, you know, I, I was watching this happen and <laughs> what I was waiting for them to hit me up on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, because me too. I was going to mess with them. So as soon as he hit me up, I, uh, I he said, hey, man, can you do me a favor? And I said, I responded. I said, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you contact her? Uh, uh, contact me after what you effing did. She was my wife. <laughs> <laughs> And then the guy deleted the conversation, but man, that was pretty funny. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, we've also seen, uh, uh, Blake Catherine, this happened too. And yeah. I think this happened to Winbush as well, Fuck you know? Yeah. And so, uh, they weren't all the sim hacks, is, but yeah. Yeah. The question is, you know, okay, so how, how do you stop this from happening? Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And the answer is you need some sort of Google authentic authenticator app or something. Right. So instead of having, you need to go through to all your email accounts, your Twitter accounts, your Instagram accounts, everything. And you need to set up two factor auth authentication with an authenticator app versus you know, text. like a text through your cell phone and, you know, disable the text option because and they could disable just turn the text on. option. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, know, yeah. you have to use the authenticator app to turn back on the text thing at that point. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 And it's I, like I think... the, the normal text message two factor authentication is just doesn't work anymore. You know, you can, you still put yourself vulnerable to getting hacked. Right. You know, using this stuff. But right. the cool thing about a Google Authenticator app is it is 100% connected to your phone and only your phone. So even if someone SIM swaps you or whatever, or I'm assuming, yeah, I mean, there's no way that they can get your Authenticator stuff. Right. So. And that's just the nature of how that works. Yeah. And, and it's this, this ever-evolving... You know, David and I were talking about this last night. It, it's ever-evolving security thing, and it always has been, even before uh -huh. crypto. They're always trying to get a step ahead so they can figure out how to scam people. And they, mm -hmm. they've hit our community really hard. I know, you know, just from David's, there's like 50k that was yeah. that was stolen. Um, you know, there's some there's some stats even here. You can see, uh, you know, he sent me these last night, 2019. Um, now these numbers are in billions. Like mm -hmm. revenues of companies compared to <clears throat> cybercrime revenue, like mm -hmm. it beats out even Amazon, Walmart, everybody. And uh, I mean, it, it's huge. Combined, six yeah. trillion dollars a year is stolen. I mean, that that's insane. That's one hundred and ninety thousand dollars a second. Yeah. It's, it's that's crazy. Absolutely insane. And um, so, so, and if you think if you think, oh, whatever, I'm not going to get hacked or something like that. I mean, just just change it. You know, just do yourself a yeah. favor and don't risk it. Yeah, you know? we, we've all kind of learned that that this is uh, this is what we got to do. You know, yeah. we're all we're all moving into this. We gotta we gotta keep it up to date. Um, hopefully, Billy welcome, will talk to us about some more stuff. Welcome to Web know? three. Yeah, welcome to Web three, huh? Um, I want to yeah. play this real quick because this is really scary. Now, I, I don't necessarily think and I don't think that they thought they were really in any immediate danger uh, yeah. physically uh, because right. who knows where this guy is. And a lot of these people, you know, they they try their best to 
to scam you, to hack you, and they're on to the next person mm-hmm. and probably would never go about doing anything physical, but it was getting threatening. Now there's a, uh, we got a video here. This is the audio from uh, from David's incident that, that he sent to me, and it's got um, a conversation with him on the phone because he called his own phone, and mm-hmm. uh, Chelsea and David talked to the hacker. So uh, let's check that out. You know, like everything, like, literally, you know, everything that's linked to your email, I'm going to reset everything one by one. So, do you want to make a deal or not? Uh, no, I, I don't think I want to make a deal. <laughs> so, should I just delete everything? Uh, I don't know. You you are the one that stole my account, so I guess you're going to do what you're going to do. I have no control over this situation, so, yeah. Um, Luke, you have an NFT worth half a million. Why don't you want to pay me like 10K or like two coins, two Ethereum, and I'll give you this Because you're a and fucking criminal. What is wrong with what you? Is, what, why, is why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Dude. Why are you doing this? We're a family. Like, what is wrong with you? I have a child. Uh, like, I, you, this you is like, insane. Yeah. No, this is not how you do life. You're being very, can very you rude. Get, can you not get her involved? Because if I do delete this number, you're never, ever going to get a hold of me. Like, you're never going to be able to talk to anyone about your IG, about your Twitter, about nobody. So be nice to me, make me a deal, and get everything back, and we can move on like nothing happened. Or if I do delete this number, and you're never going to be able to get a hold of me, you're never going to be able to call me, never going to be able to fucking... Get your account back, your IG, your Twitter. You're going to have to just forget about everything. So stop complaining, screaming. So you're telling me positive. you're telling me that what you've got is my Instagram and Twitter and you're just going to delete everything? Is that the idea? An email. An email, yeah. Um, and everything that is linked to your email, like your bank, your cash, your Uber, your files, your ID, your SSN, your statements, like mm-hmm. everything. Yeah, well, let me get back to you. Um, we're, you know, we're trying to figure this out, so. Um. Dude, it's a simple yes or no. You send me one Ethereum, I'll give you the password to the email, and you send me another, I'll give you the fucking... <laughs> yes, oh. <I> <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That's ridiculous. That's freaking crazy. It's like something out of a movie. It's like, is but this did you contacted uh, um, did you contacted Twitter and Instagram security? I guess yeah, I, I he, he contacted Twitter. Message. I know he got it back. Yeah. I don't know about his Instagram account. The Instagram you is know? not back, but he's got everything else. So that's good. Yeah. They didn't get their money, but they did get money from other from people. other people from other people. Yeah. yeah. So he has sent. Here's me... the thing. Here's the thing. Like as much as we all love each other, you know, in this space, if anyone's asking you for money, don't do it. Like, like. If if Ariev had hit me up on Instagram and said, you know, hey, can I borrow some money? I would have called him. Yeah, right. You know, right. Like, and he never, tried to do never, that. Uh, yeah, uh, or or the the hacker people tried to do that with the hacker, and yeah. he was like, bro, he's like, bro, you don't you don't need to do a video call. We're good. Yeah, you know, like try to cover it up. But yeah. I, I feel really bad for the people that went for it because they were trying to be nice. They were trying to do something for him. Yeah, didn't think anything of it. Um, but here's the thing. Uh, he sent me a link. There is um, Simon Art online. He's an artist and a cybersecurity expert, like 15 mm-hmm. years of cybersecurity. And he has on OpenSea, it's an NFT piece that you buy. It comes with an unlockable PDF. Um, and it's it's like NFT security guidelines, a comprehensive deal, mm-hmm. right? Um, they apparently uh, know who these people are. Uh, you know, they're... You got some leads and working on it and stuff because Good. there's it's, Pac, it's well, a big thing. Pac also put yes. out a fifty thousand dollar bounty on yep. this dude's head. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, which is good. <laughs> yeah, Way to if go anybody, Pac. if anybody knows, um, I, now I know you've got to have some information linked to your cash app. But when he hit me up on my personal Instagram, hey, can you do me a favor? I was like, yeah, dude, totally, man, I can do you a favor. And uh, he wanted. You know crypto and i was like well i'm not in front of my computer i could cash app you though i got his cash app out of him mm. you know so if anybody knows you know i'm sure that that's linked to something uh but it's good there's a bounty and there's um a lot of people that apparently have some good leads on these people so um Ari, what Ariev is doing he told me i could say this on the show today um he is going to do a drop to help mm-hmm. recoup 
everybody's losses who got scammed in that to to cover that and there's already mm-hmm. an artist that's interested in buying the piece mm-hmm. for this so keep an ear out for that we'll let you know when that happens and of course aria will be here on christmas we'll get the whole yeah story because i'm sure there's gonna be like yeah. a million questions and stuff too do yourself a favor and just you know start moving everything over to the authenticator app it'll take you like an hour or two you know but it's worth it. The peace of mind that comes along with it. As soon as I switched over everything, I felt a lot better about life. Here's you know? the thing. The weakest link is not your cell phone or your text. The weakest link is random guy or girl mm-hmm. working at the, the, you know, a physical store somewhere and, and, and just a service scams. provider being trying yeah. to be nice with clients that are just whining right. about something. And like, yeah, there and are now, so many scams involving that, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are. And, and AT&T is really good with it. If you do a PIN number with AT&T, they are very, 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 very secure with that. Like, there is yeah. nothing they can do without that PIN number. Like, that is a big mm-hmm. deal. But T-Mobile is aware of this. That's why I'm like, is T-Mobile not liable? Is there not somebody liable somewhere for this? Yeah, even, T-Mobile even down, should be liable for this. And if it gets down to a single person not doing what they're supposed to do, could that come down to a civil suit? Yeah. I don't know, because that person is the one person that like hold can hold your entire life in their hands. And I don't think mm-hmm. it's taken seriously enough. Not at all. Yeah. Because you know, all they've got to do is is social engineer that person or bribe them, honestly. Yeah. You know? Or if you're even working at a T Mobile store or an AT and T store, you could just get into it yourself. That's true. You know? That's true. I think that this <clears throat> is gonna become a bigger deal. And yeah. um, we'll see where it goes. I think the solution really, though, is just to cut them out of it and, and go with something yep. else. So Yeah, totally. Let's talk about the major drops this week. Yes. You can go through the list here. Uh, yeah, let's go through the list. Up. Um, first up, up. Uh, Nifty <laughs> Gateway. What? I said it'd probably help if I pull the list up, but yeah. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, yeah. First up, Nifty Gateway. Today, uh, we've got two drops. First one uh, by uh, Jason Ebayer. I think is how you say his name. He's the one that does the really shiny, muscly people, you know? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I you know Jay. The shiny, muscly people. Yes. Yeah, the shiny, muscly people. Shiny. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that, that one should be, you know, a good drop. Jason's always a very popular person on the, the NFT space. So um, next up, you've got uh, Alex Solis. Uh, is doing a drop today as well. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it consists of. This is as much information as I got. Yeah. Interesting so. teaser. Yeah. Right. 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 Um, next up tomorrow we got Cornelius oh, no Damrick. Uh, Zomax. No Zomax way. is gonna do a drop. Yeah. I may. I may pick up one of his pieces What's tomorrow. What's he doing here? Um, he's doing a, a couple of things. So he's been kind of teasing it. He's got this one that's like this super cool corridor. You know, uh, with uh, oh. different like depth, Z depth field and stuff. It's a, it's pretty cool pieces. It's very Cornelius. You know. Yeah. It's it's very his style. So yeah. that's cool. I'm excited to see him getting, you know, a drop on Nifty, which is great. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, the 26th, you've got Micah Johnson, is uh, doing a drop. Uh, I'm not sure what this is. Like it looks pretty. You know, some of these teasers don't do enough justice, you know. Right. But uh as we uh, always as we always, as we seem always to be say, yeah. You know, so yeah. just tease it. Yeah. Um and then on uh the twenty seventh you've got Maggie West. Maggie is a uh photographer. And so this this is a really cool uh project. So apparently she uh Ooh. photographed on, it, it's photographs, right? Oh, whoa. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's why they look so good. <laughs> what right? render engine? Right? <laughs> fire, so fire, fire. She photographed them and it rotated over 24 hours. You know? Damn. So it took pictures over 24 hours as it was rotating on a carousel. Jeez. But man, these are really pretty. I would love to see someone try and recreate those in in cinema or something, in 3D. In IRL. But that's, yeah, those, those are like straight up, like, like, legit uh yeah. fuck crystals <laughs> right there <laughs> render irl right <laughs> unbiased uh, um right <laughs> yeah um, very i don't know about the rest of the week or whatever because they oh no that's the 27th okay we're good yeah um yeah uh next up on makerspace we've got a couple of them uh first up is ethan pines ethan is a photographer um and and it's this is interesting because hmm. like so as you scroll down dave 
Um, you'll see, like, is a photographer oh, and he's using like an Elizabeth Elon Musk Holmes. picture. Yeah, Did you exactly. Watch a documentary on her. No, who is oh, she? I don't know gosh. who she is. She she came out with this whole like DNA sequencing thing, and it became a big scam. Like it's it's so weird. You got to check out oh, the documentary. That's her. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So it then, just keeps I don't zooming know. in it's, on her. It just isn't stopping. It's weird. It's still like zooming. I I feel like sometimes like people who are, aren't necessarily in the editing or motion design space like try and add motion to their stuff, and it just doesn't really oh. do it justice. Look at that, Elon right? Musk. Okay, yeah, I see. Spinning in something. So more photos. I mean, of her. yeah. Did they All right. So take that's pictures it. Pictures of her. <clears throat> what? I get they they went and took pictures of her for this. Yeah, I guess? this dude's huh. a photographer, I believe. So. Wow. All right. Um, next up tomorrow, you've got um, a curation of NFTs um, from H Creative. It's called uh, Utopian Paradise. And these are a bunch of different NFT artists and stuff like that. Uh, really, really pretty. Like I love the theme, the Utopian Paradise. And if you mm -hmm. watch some of these it's Very like they're they're just wave. i mean it's gorgeous mm -hmm. you know super gorgeous looking renders and stuff so uh that should be a good drop and that's tomorrow um that's it as far as the the main drops we've got some community drops um i'm gonna start off with i think the most important community drop <laughs> of them all mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um uh i did a new piece uh yeah you did. really excited about it <laughs> you know like i i struggled after uh so this is the piece it's called time yeah. you know right so i wanted to do you know i love i love pop culture i always have you know i love love back to the future love time travel you know and i was like i was i i released a piece you know in uh march or something like that just like everyone else did and i you know you of course you go back to some of your old renders you know your instagram posts and re-render right. them and post them as nfts right. But I, 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 and I've been wanting to do something new. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do something. And I started uh, like, this was an idea, at least the hoverboard was an idea. So I had already had it built, you know, and I had the shoes and stuff like that. Cause I love Converse shoes. I was like, you know what, I'm just going to start building stuff. And I stole some pieces from um, some other pieces that I had. And, uh, yeah, I was really happy with it. Like I, I love I love doing stuff with pop culture, you know, and I was telling like uh, David was nice enough to retweet my my uh, my Twitter thing yesterday. And I was like, and I was like, hey, thanks for the retweet. He said, yeah, it's pretty good. And I was like, thanks. I think I think this is the direction that I'm going to go with, you know, more NFTs and stuff. I want to start mm. dropping more of them because, you know, it's it's fun. It's nice, you know, to be able to just create artwork again, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. so. I don't know. I really like the piece. I think it's. I think it's fun. There's a bunch of hidden Easter eggs in there, that yeah. are like from you my personal alien life in and there stuff. Like. And I got my alien. Yeah, Brodeur I got my visitor. on the phone. Brodeur right? is on the phone. Yeah. So saying, uh, that, the it. video on the phone is of Brodeur at Camp Mograph saying the "just do it" thing. Yeah. You know, which is great. And then uh, you know, I've got references to like my old band and a bunch of like time, uh, lots of time travel references. Yeah. You know, and the dates, I'm sure, are very. The dates are all. Yeah. yeah. It's like my family's birthday and then a couple references to like star trek and stuff like that so nice yeah pretty cool <clears throat> so uh that's it for my drop um next up we've got uh blue woods yeah blue woods blue i'm woods. sorry blue woods uh, says good morning I want, i'll read it for you so you can save yeah thanks there. I, I appreciate morning. that <laughs> i wanted you guys to check out the project i'm working on and of course you don't have to mention it unless you're inclined to uh, we are inclined to so we're we are we're yeah. mentioning it the collection is called Free Spirits Collection, or Collective, sorry, a collection of 101 vivid avatars. I know, I know, LOL. The series mm. focuses on identity, expression, and freedom. There's some mystery with these characters. Uh, they are humans with android modifications or synthetics with a soul. I definitely want mm. to explore that. Anyway, thanks for your time. Have a great week. And if you, if you notice, if you have uh, looked at... Um, any of uh, Blue Woods' work before, uh, mm -hmm. these are very much that's the same style. Yeah, all of these. yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. there's, there's I, they're really pretty. I like them. How many did it say? How uh, 101. Oh, 101. 101. Yeah, yeah, and it's yeah, uh, 0.05 ETH right now, so it's 210 bucks at the current price of ETH. Man, I wonder what it costs know? to mint all these. Jeez, I don't Man. know. Man, wow. minting like I minted that piece on Foundation and stuff, and it's like it was 150 dollars to in gas to just mint it and then 150 more dollars just to list it for sale it's like really yeah. these are interesting yeah. though because like i 
don't necessarily. I mean, some of them kind of use the same. Yeah. Like, but but they are very different, you know. And yeah. Because there's only yeah, yeah, 101 yeah. of them, I feel like <clears throat> you're going to get a yeah. lot less of that issue that you get in the 10,000 pieces, you know. Yeah. Or there's some that are too similar. So this is yeah. really great. This um, is I'm great. It's good stuff. I'm interested to see how this does. Yeah. That's a really cool project. So. That's cool. cool. Yeah, and it's 0.05 ETH. Um, so uh, an, another project that I, I mentioned this a few weeks ago, Slim Hoods. Here, Dave, I'll send yeah. you the. Uh, so I like I I love I really like Slim Hoods, right? Um, let me see if I can get the website up now. That's the that's the wrong Slim Hoods. Hmm. Wait, it's got different yeah. so Slim Hoods. Annoying. Don't let me bring up okay. anything not right? family friendly here. So uh, Slim Hoods just announced um, that they were doing a, what is it called? It's called like the random character collection or something, you know, on their Discord and stuff. So I love these little guys. I think they're awesome. I mm-hmm. bought one at like 0.35 ETH and it went down like uh, about a week, week and a half ago before they announced this collective. Um, you could get one for like 20 bucks, you know, I paid like 150 for mine. You could have gotten one for 20 bucks. And now you see the floor since they announced this collective is up to 0.045 ETH, you know, which is pretty sweet. You know, it's, it's good to see that people are continuing to, uh, you know, have a roadmap for their stuff and it's causing the price to go up. I don't know. I love the slim hoods. Like you just find, I found one that looked like my wife. (laughs) Yeah. The 3D glasses. Uh, the 3D glasses ones, they're uh, they're actually worth uh, the 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 rarity on those are are pretty high. <clears throat> but yeah, our friend K Rup uh, was uh, in a, in an article. <laughs> I'll put this in the show notes. We got uh, the Bored Apes Take Manhattan. It's this article about uh, the New York uh, shenanigans uh-huh. and such. Yeah. Uh, this is, did they put I guess, his, uh, did they put his, uh, his meme in there? Well, they didn't put the, well, the meme came from the article. There, okay. <laughs> so he's in the article. I don't know if I have the meme. I'll have to go find the meme. I'm sure it's on, it's on Facebook. See, I, it's on Facebook. I think he used it as his like profile picture. Yeah. I'll go find it on Facebook <laughs> real quick. I, he hasn't, he hasn't snuck in to talk about, uh, breaking bad no. on the wire much lately. Facebook yeah. is really slow today. I'm just waiting for it to come up here. Yeah. But a uh, couple, couple At memes. At least it's working. It hasn't yeah. worked for a few days, uh, a few weeks ago. So, yeah. There you go, uh, Dave. Here we go. I got it. <laughs> yeah, I got it here. Here we go. So you call me here. 007, zero job skills, zero girlfriends, seven cartoon monkey pics. There you go. Yeah. It's crazy That's how this hilarious. is in, in, in pop culture and everything now. Uh, uh, Post Malone bought one in his music video. Yeah. You know, so it's a big deal. You see why these hackers are after somebody like like they have, yeah. you know, and, and I yeah. can also understand why um, why a lot of, of crypto uh, collectors are super anonymous and like super skittish mm. about, you know, mm-hmm. just revealing anything about their identity. Yeah, I know. If you find out who they are, you know, imagine yeah. how much you're going to be you're putting yourself out there. Yeah, right. At, at one point, I wanted to send, I made um, a 3D sculpture of uh, one of the first render that I made as an NFT, and someone bought the video version of it. So I was like, hey, oh, I want cool. to thank you about that, and I want to send you that piece. And he was like, that's fine, but thank you, but no thank you, actually. Oh, he wanted oh, to stay yeah. really, really anonymous. I'm like, I, I, I just want to thank you for the fact that you paid something. But yeah. he really just wanted to stay anonymous, <laughs> so hey, it's, it's still on my desk. If someone wants it. <laughs> that's funny. Cool. And you got your NFTs as well. Bring these up here. You got, um, oh. you have a, um, I'll I've got call- two small yeah. collections, honestly. Uh, I try to make them uh, as affordable as possible just because of the fact that I don't have the, yeah, mm-hmm. I don't have the, the, the community behind that. So I'm really just mm-hmm. making them for fun. And pretty. if I think that it's, that it's something nice, I'm, I'm putting them. I made I a like lot of rocket. just small <laughs> uh, turnaround timetable of renders. Every mm-hmm. time it's to test something. One time it was, it was to test Arnold by itself. The other time to test Ambergen, then to make more loops. Cool. So that's that's basically it. I made a, something with XParticle. As you said uh, just before I started by just re-uploading the render that I made uh, mm-hmm. in Instagram a few years ago. And then I started to make stuff specifically for, for crypto. But I made always like a still image version that is really, really cheap. And then an animated version of it that is a bit more uh, expensive. But... I don't promote them that much, so that's mm-hmm. that's why I think it's it's taking so much time and so much brain time to to stay on the social media and to 
I know. to communicate with everybody. I mean, it's it's becoming a job uh, by itself to, to just it sell is, yeah. your own NFTs. Then you have to get on and Twitter, and you're like, Ugh. right. That's yeah. the thing. So uh, uh, an old boss of mine hit me up, and he's like, hey, I want to I want to get into this NFT yeah. space. And I'm like, well, first of all, you're about like eight months too late, you know? <laughs> really? but, well, not, you know, really. Not but, really. Yes, but, but no. like, yeah. He's, no, but he, yes. He always has a tendency to be a little behind on the fads. But he hit me up and he's like, hey, I want to, uh, what do I need to do? You know, can I pay you to help me? And I was like, uh, I mean, just create artwork, then you upload it and you yeah. mint it. And then I was like, but you have to understand, it's like a full time job mm -hmm. if you want right. to, you know, do stuff like this because it's going to take a lot of work. Yeah. Especially it, like, you know, you can post stuff up online, but it's not going to sell if you don't. No. If you don't put it out there and like, you know, hey, this piece is out, blah, 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 you know, and make a name for yourself. Yeah. And also you that's, that's, you, you, that's... you interact with people on Twitter. You have like your full mm -hmm. timeline full of NFT. So you think that everybody is talking about NFT right yeah. now just because right. you had to follow all those people because you were mm -hmm. shilling with them. So it's right. like it's, it's becoming like you are entering the bubble and it feels like everybody is in it. Yeah. And as soon as you get out of that, you realize that. Well, you don't have any more. I was using Twitter just for have new stuff, uh, people that I like, people that I follow, mm -hmm. and it was just overwhelmed by everybody saying like, "Give me your NFT, sell me your NFT." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. like, man, it's just too much information for me. I had to do uh, like a, a list of people on Twitter that I'm not seeing in my feed, yeah. but just to keep following them, just in case. But just like, I couldn't, I couldn't yeah. deal with so much information in such yeah. a small amount of time. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why, like, I, I, I. I I think Paul Robinson is the perfect example of how to go from, you know, uh, uh, starting out in <clears throat> NFTs and then, you know, basically making it kind of a job. You know, I, I think Paul has done a really good job of communicating with collectors and stuff like that. Anytime I am on Twitter, I always see Paul talking to people, mm -hmm. you know, about his pieces and stuff. That's cool. <clears throat> oh, boy. Look who it is. Oh, Ooh. is that Solana the pig? <laughs> Hello, then. Oh, that's right. He's British. I yeah. forgot. <laughs> Solana the pig. There's yeah. a lot going on in the crypto space this week. That's for true. Isn't it? <laughs> Isn't it? It's hogwash. <laughs> All about the oh. little wankers hacking David. Yeah. Yeah. It's the pig's <laughs> your perfect time to lock down all your accounts. Isn't it? <laughs> That's, Those that's... eyes are creepy, man. They, like, look into your soul. Anyway. But you don't have that feeling when you are listening to it on iTunes. Like, you have to look at the YouTube video to understand uh -huh. that. <laughs> anyway, use an authenticator app, suspect suspicious DMs, and make sure your recovery phrase is safe. I personally like to write mine only in invisible oink. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that was well, so bad. I'm off to pick up some more render tokens and then go for a little walkabout. All right, yep. cheerio. Cheerio. Oh, I was, uh, I was, uh, I, w I was, I was trying to figure out a, a great way to, like, you know, keep your seed phrase and stuff like that. Invisible I was like, oink. where can I go? Where can I go to get it, like, etched into metal and stuff like that? And then I remembered, you can go to Things Remembered. Remember Things Remembered in the mall? <laughs> Like yeah, they yeah, have yeah. like like Here's charms the problem. and bracelets and stuff. Oh, or you can engrave stuff on the metal. Yeah. Just, okay. So you just engrave it, have it engraved there, and then you know put it in a safe somewhere. But if anybody has any inkling that that's what you're doing, right? I understand, but that's why you like hide it. No, you, know? you do it at you get... two different shops. Yeah. You do it at two yeah. different shops. One half at mm -hmm. each shop, and you just yeah. Yep. Glue yeah. them together at the end. Yeah, that's a go. good idea. That's a really good that's idea. A good idea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, got a, we got a note from uh, Tokyo Megaplex. Uh, he said it would be great to uh, to get uh, Kirsten Lepore on the show. I, I'm, we're gonna yes. work on that, and uh, you know it'd be cool. If maybe we could get her to come to camp or something. But um, yeah. he also says Iceland sounds like a great idea. But he said regarding mm. Hen, everything is still mm -hmm. there. That's kind of the thing about it being on the blockchain, and the community is so strong that they've made sure to post uh, this happening to triple back up everything so that it can't really get taken down so to say hen mm -hmm. is gone is a little misleading uh it's kind of a misunderstanding of what happened everyone's nfts are safe and can still be bought sold viewed whatever uh he said in fact i've had experiences in the past where i post a lot of art on a website 
years ago, lots of animations, that is gone. The animations are gone probably forever. But this, but because this stuff is on the blockchain, it's completely safe. Mm -hmm. That can't happen anymore because it's Web three, not Web two. That part is understandable. Understandable. Yeah. Every single yeah. thing you do and say from now yeah, on with Web three. It's all there forever. So <clears> honestly, <throat> pretty cool. And Hen, in my opinion, is stronger than ever. Uh, post the .xyz URL being taken offline. Kind of making me actually understand for the first time that this is a major deal regarding putting art on the blockchain. Mm -hmm. uh, also, catching up on the drop where you talked about Render and Solana, the NFTs evolving based on the owner has been a thing on hand for a while. I have heard yeah. a little bit about that. There's Mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of in interactive NFTs that support that. There was a cool one where it was a torch that could be passed around and the fire would slowly go out unless it was passed on or sold to another person. So it had to be yeah. kept being sold to be to stay alive. This is the fun stuff. This is this is going places. Mm -hmm. This would be fun. Uh, also, it sounded like art blocks where every NFT is uniquely minted using the wallet hash as a seed. Tons of cool stuff on art blocks. So there is that. We haven't talked to Tokyo Megs in a while. I know we doing. should have him on the show. Yeah, uh, a couple links I wanted to talk about real quick, and um, there is, uh, I believe his name is pronounced Chamath. Ch Chamath, C H A M A T H, looks like Ch mm -hmm. Math. Uh, that's his Twitter handle. Uh, he was talking about render actually, and uh, he was using examples of uh, token projects and things that mm -hmm. have meaning behind them, have structure behind them, have an economy behind them. And he's a huge, huge, huge name in the crypto world. And for him to be bringing up Render specifically, I think was mm -hmm. was uh, really cool. Um, and it was on a show, I believe, with uh, Jason Calacanis, I noticed as well. It was somebody that I've followed for years. He used to be on, uh, not Tech TV, but um, This Week in Tech Network, Leo Laporte's network. Um, also, this is interesting. The L.A. Staples Center is going to be renamed <laughs> to Crypto.com so Arena. Crypto.com yeah. Staples uh, yeah. Crypto yeah. Center. Isn't that's that crazy. insane? Um, that's just kind of a sign of where things are going. Also, an article yep. this morning, Kathy Wood says institutional buys make a bull case for Bitcoin reaching $500,000 by 2026. Mm -hmm. Five, like half a million per coin. Can you even imagine yeah, and a lot of millionaires with that. And that happens. guy, that guy who uh, paid ten thousand Bitcoin for a pizza, <laughs> yeah. like kicking himself. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, <clears throat> that is it. That is it. That's a lot today. I'm, yeah, it I'm is. Kind of uh, proud of ourselves for staying on track and only making this a two-hour show. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so if. Uh, if you or anyone you know has a drop coming up, uh, feel free to email us, info at mograph.com. We'll show it on the show. Other than that, let's get back to the other show. Let's do it. The drop. Drop, drop. Is this the fucking mic? Drop. This is exactly what I should be doing. <laughs> Whew. Arno, thank you so I much for being so on much. the show, man. Thanks yeah. for having me, guys. Honestly, I'm impressed by Matt's uh, stamina on uh, how to deal with, uh, right? with his night and everything. I That's am amazing. so tired right now. I'm I guess. very, very tired. Yeah. I mean, you, I did, you only I had did to have go to the to bathroom I only had, once. I only had to take one break, which <laughs> is normally what I do on the show anyway. <laughs> well, yeah. It was no, that's just impressive. a little bit more extended. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, thank, thanks for having me. If anybody has any question regarding either Moment Factory or working on large scale mm -hmm. project, don't hesitate to use my uh, Twitter handle is right here, right there, right there. It's, it's really yeah. difficult. I couldn't be a Meteo yeah. guy, honestly. <laughs> it's right there. We'll put the link in the uh, show so notes really as well. So really don't hesitate. It's, uh, it's here for that. I'm really happy to help, even if it's just a technical question on something mm -hmm. or if it's more Moment Factory related, of course, you can go directly through Moment Factory uh, social account. But I'm, I'm always happy to help someone in the needs. I will just maybe ask you to give me a favor and to send me Ethereum on your personal email. But that's something <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. completely different <laughs> from what we've yeah. talked today. That's fine. Yeah. Can you do me a favor? Oh, yeah. yeah it was, it Matt, was my wife. <laughs> Matt actually <laughs> sent me. Uh, and Matt actually did loan me oh, some yeah. ETH yesterday. And I was like, can you do me a favor? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so 
yeah, um, yeah, we'll put all the links to everything in the show notes. You can check all of this out there. You can rate us on iTunes, leave a review, help to get our ratings up, subscribe on your podcatcher of choice, and subscribe to our newsletter. You can say you've been there, done that, got the t-shirt with the MoGraph logo tee, the Paul Bab, Feel the Bab 2020 shirt. All the profits from that go to Doctors Without Borders. The Render Things t-shirt, hoodie, and long sleeve tee, the That Render is Fire shirt, which you're only allowed to wear ironically. Unless you're Shams. Unless you're Shams. Yeah. And the MoGraph Blandishment shirt. Make sure you check it all out. And we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. Please follow us on there. And MoGraph.com. Oh and, uh, My kid is just screaming in the background. <laughs> I'm not sure if y'all can hear that. No, not nope. at all, actually. Good That's good. Yeah. 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 We'll cut all of it out. Don't worry. We'll just yeah. edit everything. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks everybody for, uh, for joining us. Um, Mm -hmm. make sure that you, uh, get your tickets for the LA meetup and make sure that you get yourself a a little copy of, uh, brush up procreate course, slash classes. And, uh, that pretty much wraps it up till next time. I'm Dave and I'm Matt and I'm Arnaud. Thanks for joining us today. (laughs) Have a good one. Later. you. My audio might have been a little, like, lower than normal. That's all right. I got you covered. Uh, which episode was this? 306. But I can stop my recording right now. It's okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>